We on the record? Okay. Good morning, everyone. It is nine o'clock, and I would like to call to order the City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement Special Magistrate Hearing. Uh, Happy New Year. It's January 4th, 2023. My name is Keith Davis. I'm the Special Magistrate appointed by the City to preside over today's agenda. Before we get started, if you have any cell phones or other things that make noise, if you'll please silence those so they don't interrupt uh, our proceedings, I will appreciate that. Um, if you're here uh, for a case, when your case is called, if you will come up to the podium to my right, um, when your case is called, um, I will hear first from the city. The cities uh, will have may have one or more witnesses who will um, in all likelihood testify about the alleged violations. There will uh, probably be photographs or other documents that are displayed on the monitors uh, that are part of the record. You'll have an opportunity to look at those documents and those photographs. Uh, once the city has concluded its presentation and made any recommendations on um, how to resolve the case, I will then come back over to you. It'll be your opportunity to tell me about the case from your perspective. Um, if you have additional documents or photographs that you want me to consider uh, regarding the case, that will be the time to produce those. Once I've heard everything uh, from uh, everybody about the case, in all likelihood today, I will enter an order that resolves the matter in some form or fashion. Um, We may have some, I'm not sure, we may have some cases that involve city staff that we have to um, get through and get them uh, on their way and out of here. So uh, we'll probably take those cases first and then the cases for folks who are here um, I'm in whatever order you signed up or signed in. And uh, so that's generally how we'll proceed. And um, with that explanation, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Starting with agenda item number one, case number is CE2204. Oh, I'm sorry. I t <laughs> See, it's, I haven't been here in a couple of months. I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're going to be speaking to me today about any of the matters on our agenda, your testimony does need to be sworn, so I need to place you under oath. If you'll all please stand, I will swear everybody in at the same time. Thank you. Do each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, All right. Thank you. Now we can proceed with the Okay. Agenda. Starting with agenda item number one, case number is CE2204-0117. Case address is 3636 Whitetail Drive, Unit 306. Good morning. Good morning. Alberto Fernandez, Development Services. On April 9th, 2022, I issued a stop work order working without a permit for installing an air conditioning system. On December 12, 2022, uh, posted a, a notice of violation, and as of today, they still have not pulled the permit. Thank you. Inspector Fernandez, a couple of questions, please. Um, with respect to this case, is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes. And does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was sent by certified mail? Yes. Also by regular first class mail? Yes. When you talk about posting, was the notice of violation posted at the property? Yes. And was it posted at City Hall? Yes. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about what it is you observed at the property that leads you to believe there's an alleged violation? Well, a contractor called me to let me know. I'm sorry, sir. A, a contractor called me to let me know. And what did he say? That a work was being done without a permit. Okay, and I believe he didn't get the job. That's what. Oh, uh, okay. And did he reference the fact that it was this address? Yes. And then, as a result of that phone call, did you go to the address? Yes, I made several attempts to okay. talk to the homeowner. A okay. And did you observe? Um, what is it that you observed at the property? New equipment. Okay. And um, did you take photographs? Yes. And do those photographs truthfully and accurately depict and represent? Um, what you observed at the property? Yes. Okay. And um, what is it you're seeking here today um, in terms of an amount of time to bring the alleged violation into compliance? Uh, $50, 30 days. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. No, don't uh, go away, sir. Okay. Wait, wait um, one moment. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, certified mailing documents, 
affidavit of posting, stop work order, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents are made part of the record. Um, so ha nothing's happened at this point? No permit's been apl even applied for? Nothing. And I made several attempts to go there. To what kind of property is this? Is this a multifamily building? It's I mean, I saw a picture with... It's like a five-story building. Okay. Oh, commercial building? Mm -hmm. Okay. Were all of those, uh, a all that AC equipment uh, the subject of the work without a permit that it's in the picture? No, just that one. Just the one right there? Yeah, okay. the carrier. All right. Uh, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? All right. I do find proper notice with the posting and, and mailing, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence in this case, I do find property remains in violation as cited. I'll allow 30 additional days for uh, compliance to be achieved after that daily fines of $50 per day are assessed until, until we get compliance. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Agenda item number three, case number is CE2209-0378. Case address is 633 11th Street. Good morning. My name is Paul Tharp with the Development Services. Good morning. And uh, we posted uh, a permit a work done being done at uh, 633 11th Street. And was uh, we, we posted this, um, we mailed, we certified mailed at uh, 12722, posted at the City Hall at uh, 12722. And was posted on the property at 12 13 22 and we took pictures of uh, the violation windows and doors were installed without a permit thank you inspector tharp a couple of questions please do you have an executed affidavit of posting in your file yes ma'am including uh, or in addition to um certified and the postings uh that you de de described was the notice of violation also sent by regular first class mail? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Was there a stop work order posted? Yes, there was. And after the stop work order was posted, did you have any contact or response from the property owner? No, ma'am. We, we've tried, but no response. Okay. And up to today, has there been any response at all? No. Okay. And can you just tell us a little bit about what you observed at the property in regards to? How did you know it was new windows? What doors? What windows? Can you just describe briefly? Yeah, it was all the windows um, in the front and the and the rear, and on the side. Okay, and, um, and doors. Okay, and um, the photographs um, are those a truthful and accurate depiction and representation of the alleged violations you observed at the property? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and to this date, is there any permits been filed? No. Okay. And what are you seeking today in regards to a remedy? $50 a day, 30 days. I'm sorry, say again, sir. 30 days and $50 a day. Okay, thank you. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, stop work order, and photographs and any other documents relied upon. All right, those documents are part of the record uh, for this case. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? Uh, I do find proper notice with the certified mail in the posting, even though the respondent is not present at today's hearing. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find that the property remains in violation as cited. I'll allow 30 additional days for compliance. After that, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, moving to agenda item number 35. Case number is CE2210379. Case address is 704 52nd Street. I believe we have a Otto Herrera present. You can come to the stand, sir. Good morning. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. Robert Watkins, City of West Beach Code Compliance. Uh, this property was cited on uh, October 25th. Certified uh, mail was sent October 26th. Certified mail was received November 10th. 
City Hall was posted December 6. This property was posted for uh, panels on windows, uh, outdoor storage, landscape maintenance, junk vehicle fence permit. Uh, complied violations were panels on the windows, uh, landscape maintenance, and junk vehicle. Remaining violations were uh, fence permit and outdoor storage. I've had a correspondence with the uh, owner who is right over there. And the city is requesting 30 days at $100 per day if compliance isn't achieved. Thank you, Officer Watkins. A few questions, please. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular mail? Yes, it does. And was the notice of violation posted at the property? Yes, it was. Uh, the photographs um, that are in the file that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you observed at the property? Yes, it does. Could you please describe for the pro for the uh, violations that uh, the alleged violations that remain outstanding, what it is that you specifically observed? The ones that are outstanding, you say? Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, fence permit, uh, just because there hasn't been a, a permit in there uh, in the last 20 years for the, the PCB fence that was installed in the front, which is right there with the sliding opening. Okay, so that's the wh that's a white fence that you're referring yes, to, correct? Okay. And uh, also, th there's outdoor storage. Just in the pictures you'll see, there's like uh, workman helmets and things like that, or the store under the carport uh, on the ground. Okay, thank you. Uh, just to make uh, very clear, um, it's your understanding that 18100 alleged violation is no longer outstanding. This is no longer at their panels are up. Uh, okay, the as well, the 34102A is. Yep, that one as well. Okay. And the 94442C1. Yes, that one is also. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Special Magistrate. The city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the entire claims uh, case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, um, photographs, and any other document relied upon. All right, those documents are made part of the record. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Go ahead and tell me your name and address, please, and then you can tell me about the case. Uh, my name is Otto Herrera, 704 52nd Street, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33407. And are you the uh, manager of the LLC? I'm the owner. You know, okay. All right, go ahead. Well, the fence has been there for like 20 years, uh, and he said there was no permit for any fence. So when I said that there was a permit, he came back five days later and called me and said that there was a permit for the fence, but not for a white fence. Um, he said there was no permit, period. So I had to call the city of West Palm or, you know, records department, because you can't see it on public records if there's permits or no permits after 1999. And they pulled a permit, and I have the permit right here. So there was a permit. Okay. Um, I, let's, uh, if you can show that um, to Mr. Watkins, and then I'll take a look at that. Now, as far as the storage, there was a rack with shoes where people dry their shoes after they go working. Uh, why is that a problem having a rack of shoes out there on, on, the, on the porch for, for anybody? Okay. If you can show that picture. And now he's saying that it, that's still in violation. We got rid of that rack. No, there was, uh, there was helmets and things, as you can see on there. There was more than just a shoe rack. Um, there was a kind of motor oil on it. No, this is right behind you. See this I can see that, yeah, the so picture. There was quite a few things. Um, and when it came down to the permit, uh, I did get back in contact with you. I did send you that uh, copy of the permit, uh, letting you know that the original permit was for a chain link fence. You didn't send me. A, you didn't send me a copy. When yeah, I emailed it to you and I called you after Mr. Craig verified that it was a uh, over a twenty year old permit. And uh, when you change any fence from chain link to the white PCB, especially put in that slider, you would need to get a permit uh, for it. I think Mr. Craig also um, made you aware of that. And that's when I came back and told you that you would also need to have a permit for changing out the chain link fence. And then you you express your opinion that it was still on the sides and the rear and I reiterated to you that once you change it again you would need definitely need a permit for it especially with the fence that you replaced it with and then your attorney called yesterday and I, I let him know the exact same thing he said was he here but I don't see him uh, that it also would need a permit for that well you said there was no permit on the fence period 
All right, so I want to take, we have two issues. We have the outdoor storage and the fence permit, correct? Yes. So um, I'd like you to show see the outdoor the outdoor storage picture. I would like, you said you have a copy of a fence permit. Right here. If you can show that to the city and then I'll take a look at that. But I need to, I need to see it if you want me to consider yeah, it. Yeah, that's, I've seen that one actually. Okay. I have not. If you want me to consider it, I need to look at it. Very simple. Thank you. So you've seen this, Mr. Yes, Watkins. Do you have any objection to this being made no, part of the record? No, no, no. Okay. Let me just see what we're looking at here. This is a certificate of approval and occupancy for new improvements from the Building and Zoning Department, City of West Palm Beach. There's a permit number. Um, if I'm reading this correctly, this is from 1973. Um, For 70452nd Street. Is this for the address that we're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Um, permit type building, fence. Don't, nowhere, nowhere in there does it say chain link fence or PVC fence. So how are we supposed to know if the permit is, you know, correct? Okay, so tell me, I mean, this appears to be a permit to install a fence on the property from a long time ago, but um, what's, what, what's the city's position in well, terms of the relevance of this, this um, permit? Okay. When you reinstall the fence, um, honestly, the chain link, when you redo the stakes and take all that stuff up, you're going to need a permit. Any section larger than six foot in repairs, you're going to need a permit. And with when I spoke to him, he also stated that, yeah, that section is one that was installed. And I said, well, regardless of the time that it was installed, there still was never a permit for it. Okay, so you're saying that the fence that this permit allowed was installed removed at some point in the future and the fence and the picture I'm looking at is a different fence yes, for which a permit was not pulled. Yes, it was originally chain link all the way around. And okay. he also stated that to me that was chain link and they have this white one up now with the slider and that wasn't permitted. Okay. Sir, do you want to respond to that or do you have questions uh, regarding that testimony? Well, when I got the notice, when I, when I got the notice, he said there was no permit period, you know. And what I see, there's a permit for a fence. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. You know I, don't, I don't know what am I supposed to do. Okay. And as far as the storage. Well, I'll, I mean, let's, I'm, well, no, I'll, get still the storage, okay. I'll get to the storage in just a second. I, I, I want to finish considering the, the fence. So do you know when, when the fence was replaced? I really don't. All right, but you didn't, your, is your testimony that you were not the person that replaced it or you are I, the person that replaced no. it? I have repaired a fence, but on the side, I replaced it because a tree was growing into the fence, so I took a section of the fence out and replaced it. Okay. But that, that fence was already there when I bought the house. The fence I'm looking at in the picture right. was already there. And you, your testimony is you've done repair work on it, but... I done repair on, on the chain link fence on the left side. Okay. Because like I said, there was a tree growing into it, so I had to like kind of go around the tree. <coughs> All right, Mr. Watkins, did you have any testimony in response or any questions on the fence issue before I move on to no. the outdoor storage? No. no. Okay. Um, All right, so the code for the outdoor storage um, says that outdoor storage in residential districts is limited to domestic equipment and normal supplies necessary for residents. Storage is not permitted in any required or unrequired front setback or in any required side setback. Storage is permitted in unrequired side setbacks when completely screened by a fence or landscaping. So, um, Mr. Watkins, if you can walk me through the picture, show me what we're talking about with the outside storage violation. Shoot, it gave me a different one. Well, I 
there, there was outdoor storage. There's also some other front door as well. There should be, if you zoom in more, you'll see it on both sides of the front of the uh, vehicle right there. And there's a, a, should be another image on there by the uh, front door as well. Okay. I can't, I can't hear what you're saying. Can you repeat what you said and, uh, and right closer to the there. microphone? So that Sorry. Right up under the uh, the carport area, uh, there's outdoor storage. The other picture's kind of dark, but it's it's there before the, uh, well, when the vehicle was moved. As prior to when the vehicle was there, there's uh, there's outdoor storage right there to the left of it by the door. You're talking about next to the no, That's the mops and things that were on the front patio, but there's also uh, in the driveway. Really? Really? <laughs> okay, did you have any um, questions for Mr. Watkins? Or He's considering a mop. Pardon out me? there as outside storage that, that wasn't what i was i was speaking about the things under the uh storage i was just saying that one was the mop but no keep going right by the so that the, the picture that has the green suv in there that's originally the outdoor storage where it was there beyond the hats and things of that nature there are some home depot buckets and things out there as well but all that was just right to the right of the where the suv was parked the rack was taken out and that's what's left you considering that outside storage, a hat and a mop? If you can, sh if you can show that picture again, please. That's your. That's the original picture. That was the one that was taken out. So let me ask the city this question, and I'm not sure if this is for Ms. Franconero or Mr. Watkins. The code prohibits outdoor storage uh, in any required or unrequired front setback. So if it's inside the carport, is that in either a required or unrequired setback, or is that within the, the structure itself? Can I have one moment, sir? Yeah, sure. While, while they're conferring, Mr. Watkins, you've also got this photograph that's up. Um, that what up, tell me, so there's like a a mop behind that little wall. What what else am I looking at there? Yeah, that was the original um, picture. Oh, but there was like a mop bucket, a rope tied around there, going somewhere in the yard. Um, I don't quite remember exactly what was going on there, but there was a few things that was. Yeah, I don't have any idea what that rope was used for, but. There were just things that were on there. Which with the other pictures of the front, it's hard to see the way the fence is to actual, with the image to see the, the items that were on there or to the left of the fence opening. So, so the blue cord that, that Mr. Watkins was just pointing out, what is that? I really don't know. I don't. I, I didn't see it when I went to the property, um, but it's not there now. I don't believe it's not there anymore. No. Okay. It might have been like Christmas lights or something. Okay. Something for lights. They did. They did have a whole bunch of Christmas lights up. Either way, it's been taken down. Yes. Okay. I mean, some of the Christmas lights might still be up, but I I don't remember seeing that on the post. Special Magistrate, we have um, Mr. Joyce to speak. Sure. Hi, Mark Joyce. Yes, sir. We're looking at the uh, the definition of outdoor storage, and we think there's two things there. One is that outdoor storage is limited to domestic items, and then also there's no storage allowed in a side or, or front setback. 
Okay. Uh, so the city's position is that uh, that it's in the it's on the side. It's it's not domestic equipment. I mean, it, you you could you could put out a barbecue grill or, yes. or a patio set, something like that, but you can't put out a couch or. And really, I don't think mops should be even stored outside of your house. I mean, that, that should be put in, put okay. out of sight. You know. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Um, all right. Anything else from the city uh, on either? Um, and those are the only two remaining violations. Yep. Those are only two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anything else you'd like to tell me, sir, about the case? So to be clear, what are the violations that he's talking about? The violations that the city is proceeding with is the. Um, the fence part, the lack of a permit for the fence right. and the outdoor storage. Um, the city's testimony is that uh, the, the original violations regarding safe egress, the uh, abandoned vehicle and the landscaping have all been complied. Okay. I have a question about the uh, abandoned vehicle. Well, that, that's been complied. It's not before me. Um, okay. Um, but you'll be, you know, what I would suggest if you have a question about what happened with that, you speak to, uh, speak to the city um, outside of the hearing. Okay. Anything else regarding the matters that, that we're dealing with here? Uh, no, just those two items, I'm okay. I mean, okay. The, the outside storage, if that's still a problem, I can take care of that. I mean, that's not a big deal. Okay. You know, if it's a mop head out there or whatever that is. In terms of compliance on the fence permit, what is the city looking for? Did the, the applying for a permit and having an inspection, is that what needs to happen? Yeah, uh, like I spoke to him before, I told him he would have to come in and you know do the, go through the process with building to get the permit and to get it uh, inspected to have the actual permit for the new section of fence. All right, assuming there's a, you know, a good faith effort to do that, is, is 30 days enough time to have that process begun and completed? I don't, I don't want to set this up for failure. Yeah, um, when I spoke to building on yesterday, they said that should be enough because the fence is already there. Uh, they would just come out and inspect it um, within the termination of if he has a survey or not. Okay. Uh, accurate, that's on file. Uh, I spoke to this attorney yesterday. I let his attorney know that, you know, with all the time that's passed fighting the issue of that, you could just make sure you got your survey and everything. I mean, I'm up to giving them 40 days, but I think 40 days is enough. Time, bless you to just have the survey if you don't have it and to have the city inspect it. But it will only be as fast as he proceeds to, you know, go to building and to get it done. Okay. All right, here's what, what uh, I'm gonna do in this case. First of all, I do find proper notice. Um, the city has the proper documents in its file and the respondent is present at today's hearing based on the testimony and the evidence, um, which um, for housekeeping purposes, I am uh, including in the record the um, the uh, permit document uh, that the respondent provided at today's hearing, that will be part of the record. Um, may I keep that document for the file, sir? Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, Special Magistrate, could we establish whether or not the respondent has an objection to the case file and the documents for the city? Sir, do you have any comments or objections to any of the other documents that are in the record that the city has shown on, this, on the screen? On the screen? The, no. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, I find that city, the violation alleged of uh, city code 18100, 34102A, and 94442C1 have all been complied. Um, I do find that violations of 94302A3 regarding the fence permit and 9471C regarding outdoor storage remain. Uh, I'm gonna allow, um, I'm gonna bifurcate this order. I'm gonna allow 30 days for the outdoor storage, it sounds like that that's already been taken care of, but you just need to have um, Mr. Watkins come out, put his eyes on it and verify that and sign off. Uh, but I'll go ahead and do 30 days for that. I'm gonna do 45 days for the fence permit, um, just uh, to be sure. Um, Your Honor, I don't, uh, I don't have a permit uh, survey. Okay, so is there a way to get this done without the survey or? or? To my knowledge, just, uh, he may need it. Like I told him, I'm not 100% sure because I'm not in building, but that's one of the requirements that he asked for with the new fence. And you know what, I'm, I'm gonna do 60 days for compliance on that one um, in the event that a survey has to be obtained. I wanna make sure there's plenty of time to do that. Um, so 30 days for outdoor storage, 60 days for the fence permit. 
Uh, if those deadlines are not met and the violations remain, um, uh, I'm going to impose daily fines of $25 per day until compliance is achieved. I know the city asked for $100. I, don't, I think that's probably a little much in this case. Um, okay, and I will sign that order. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Moving to agenda item number 14, case number is CE22120136. Case address is 2223 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, Unit 101. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On December 12, 2022, the property at 2223 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, Unit 101, was cited for repeat violation, business tax receipt expired, prohibited signage on city right of way, and prohibited portable signage. The property was posted 1219. Certified mail was sent 1214. Certified mail was returned 1228. Um, the property has since come to compliance with the business tax receipt and the prohibited signage and in the city right of way and prohibited signs in prohibited portable signage. Um, the property did, did come into compliance on December 20th. Um, I've been in c contact with the property owner. Uh, he did submit to a, an email to me outlining when the signs were removed, which was December 20th. Um, I told him that I would accept that due to the holidays and I was out of the office. Um, the property has been out of compliance for eight days. The city is recommending $150 a day for eight days, totaling a one-time fine of $1,200 for the repeat violation. Um, the underlining repeat violation case is CE 20110016. And that case came into compliance on November 17th, 2020. Can I see the order? Or I'll let Ms. Franklin there do her uh, questioning and then I'd like to also see the order from the 2020 case. Thank you. Officer McFarland, just a couple of questions. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes, ma'am. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes, ma'am. Was the uh, property unit number posted uh, posted with the notice of violation? Yes, ma'am. And are we talking about, um, I think the photos showed furniture direct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the um, alleged violations that you observed at the property? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Special Magistrate, um, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to all documents relied upon, notice of violations, certified mailing documents, affidavit of posting, photographs, as well as the underlying case. Click on the repeat. repeat. The underlying case order. notice of violation. Um, and thank right you. beneath it. The order's there. There you go. Okay. All right, so in the 2020 case, uh, there was a finding of violation for the um, Prohibited signs on city right away and prohibited portable signs. Yes, sir. Sir, that's a 2011 case. Is that accurate? 
Yes, that's the that's the case. Or 20, the twenty eleven case. That's yes. Not twenty. <laughs> okay, so if it's a twenty eleven case, is is that not hmm? too stale to be considered a repeat? No, it shouldn't election? be twenty eleven. Should be twenty twenty. If it's a 2011 case, doesn't the repeat case have to be within five years? I apologize. You guys are <laughs> I do apologize. I see 2011, and I think it's 2011. <laughs> it is really 2020 in November. Oh, Let's my Lord. Let's just scroll Lord. down and just look at the signature. Of the, I guess it's the way seven, your case seven, number seven, is. Seven, that's okay. Specified. Can you scroll to the bottom of, of that order? I just want to see November 18th, 2020. Okay, that's <laughs> two years ago. Because I got it written down. <laughs> okay. And that's what your testimony was, that it was from... Yes, sir. <laughs> from, uh, November 17th of 2020. So, okay. All right, good morning, sir. Uh, go ahead and tell me your name and address, and then you can tell me about the case. I am David Miller from McCall Holdings 1 LLC, the owner of the property 2223 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. Um, Property is in full compliance. I had a chance to speak with Mr. McFarland yesterday. Um, the only thing we really had a quibble about was the request for the imposition of the fine. Um, I have a problem with it because my client, I can't say that he did or did not ever actually receive the notice. All I know is that he became aware of the issue after the notice was posted on the property because his mother had happened to go by and saw it. Okay. As soon as he became aware of it, which was on December 20th, the signs were removed, business tax was taken care of, Mr. McFarland was contacted. The same day, he became aware of it. So we would ask that no fine be imposed because as soon as my client, the owner of the property, became aware of it, it was taken care of, same day. All right, thank you. Let me um, ask the city a question. Based on, um, I'm looking at the order, the 2020 case, mm -hmm. uh, that makes this a repeat. According to the language I'm reading, that was also a repeat. So is this a second repeat? Second repeat. You got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that the city uh, wants to put on the record in this case? Special Magistrate, just some housekeeping if I can, um, just uh, uh, to be abundantly um, out of caution. Um, the evidence submitted would include the 2020 underlying um, notice of violation I, I misspoke and said the 2011 no um, that's the way i read it too yeah. i looked at the case number and it looked you know it's 2011 and i just saw 2011 so uh and just it is a 2020 case yeah and just making sure that whether the respondent has an objection to the document do you have any objections I, to any of the documents that the city has shown i don't know if it's an objection per se but i would like to note that for the certified mail receipts if there's any signature indicating the date, if any, that my client received the actual notice. Can you pull that up? Let because the city's the asking for fines day. to be imposed from the 12th when no notice was given until the 14th and it wasn't posted until the 19th. So there's a couple of days in there where I don't even know if the tenant was advised that there was an issue. And I have the tenant here with me who I think would like to speak. Yep. I would like to um, add to that. Tenant was well aware because <laughs> they know me by face, and I gave them the opportunity to go ahead and comply before I sent the notice out. And they stated to me that they were given permission, and I stated to him, no one would have gave you permission to put the signs where you have them. Now, I did go ahead and reach out to Miss Angela Van this morning, and what she, the conversation she had with the gentleman was to have a banner on the building Nothing else. Okay, so it looks like that was signed for on December 28th. Uh, um, was that the, there were two certified mails that were sent out. I can't say whether my client ever actually even received it. So if there'd be a signature card for the one that was sent to McCall Holdings, it shows when McCall Holdings actually received it. We can go ahead and take a look at that, but uh, I don't think it's going to matter. I mean, my understanding of the law is that on a repeat violation, the fines can begin to run when that's observed, not when the respondent is put on notice. Um, so the day that Mr. McFarland saw it is the day that a repeat violation fine can begin to be assessed. Um, 
my, even my, if your client didn't get notice for a couple of days after that. My client doesn't occupy the property. He has no idea that that issue even exists until somebody brings it to his attention. Um, so he's, he's in a sense being fined while he's giving the code enforcement officers, giving the tenant the benefit of, hey, I see a problem. I'm telling you, tenant, you need to fix it. He never tells that to my client, the owner of the property. Well, that never makes it to my client until after the notice was posted and his mother saw it. City is not a babysitter of property. Thank you, sir. City, um, if you're going to be a landlord and a property owner, then that's between you and your tenant. And at the end of the day, the property owner is responsible for complying with the city code. So I, I have no sympathy for, and the fact that this is a second repeat, um, he needs to find a better tenant or, or deal with the tenant Just on his own. But, but uh, I, that, none of those arguments uh, sway me in this case. Can I ask when the first? Anything else you'd like to put on the record, sir? Yes, may I ask when the first violation was? Was it within this five-year period that would make oh, it I a don't know. subsequent? The 2020 repeat? order references the fact that that case was a repeat. And I'm not going back and retrying the 2020 case. I'm simply reading that order that says the order, uh, uh, the violation of the sign code qualifies as a repeat violation. Um, so that tells me that that, you know, and that's a final order that's several years old. So that was a repeat. Now we're back again two years later, and it's a repeat again. So the reason I ask is because I don't know if the initial first violation was with a different tenant that was from 1986. I, I don't know. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't. I'll testify to that. It's the same tenant. All right. Anything else, sir? And um, you are? I'm an attorney. Okay. How you guys doing today? Were you sworn in? I'll swear in. No, did I, were you sworn in when I swore everybody no, in? No, sir. If you raise your right hand, please, do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. All right, go ahead and tell me uh, your name and address. And My name is Neil Marcelino. I'm the owner of Furniture Direct. That's located at 2223 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. I did not get to see Mr. McFarland on this incident. He's seen some of the people who work for me, but I just like to explain what I did because I think that's more important than anything that was discussed here. I've been in the city having a company since the 90s. I've always been cooperative with multiple locations throughout the city. I've done nothing but benefit the city by doing good business. I did have an issue in the past with the banner flags. So when this time came that I wanted to have a sale for like a going out of business sale. We weren't gonna leave, but like a liquidation. I did the proper channels. I came to this building in October. I walked into the lobby. I said what I wanted to do because I wasn't sure where to go. They directed me to zoning and planning. When I went to zoning and planning, I was greeted and spoken to by the assistant, Valentina Broglia. She handled me face to face in the lobby. I never seen Ms. Van. I spoke with her on two occasions that same morning I spoke to her for about 10 minutes. She went in, spoke with Ms. Van. She came out, told me what I could do because what I asked to do. Then I asked a final <coughs> question and said, what if I need more than the 90 days? She went back in and asked Ms. Van and then came out and gave me that answer. I have both of their business cards from the day that I went into the lobby and this is what I was instructed to do. I asked if I could apply for like a permit or some type of temporary thing to have a sale. And Ms. Van told Ms. Broglia to tell me that I did not need that. If any of her officers or anybody showed up to just let them know that she gave me permission to put up the banner flag, there could have possibly been a misunderstanding of me saying banner flag to Ms. Broglia and then them thinking I was talking about a regular banner, but it's a banner flag, they're like long. I never would disrespect you and not do that. Anybody in the city who's a code enforcement, almost all of them know me because of the kind of businesses I've had, the car washers and all that stuff. I'm a respectful man, and I respect what everyone here does. And that fine that you're gonna impose, the landlord's gonna impose it on me. So the working guy trying to have a sale to stay in business is gonna get hit with a $1,000 fine. Not fair. I tried to do the right channel. If there was a mistake, and the only reason I didn't take it down the minute he gave me the notice is because I called Ms. Van. And I spoke to Ms. Van on the phone, and she told me on the phone who was the officer? I told her Mr. McFarland. She said, I'll speak with him. 
So I didn't go and take it down, and I left a message on his phone on the city to speak to me, and I didn't know he was out of town. When I sent the email, he did reply back and said he was out of town, so I understand that. But I didn't do anything being malicious. I didn't do anything with no regard for the city law. I don't do that. I'm a businessman. I run a real business. I pay 25000 a month for rent for that one location. It's like, you guys shouldn't do that to me. That's why I came today. I have no beef with anybody. Every code enforcement guy, anybody in the city has always been good to me. Really. They're all real people. Sort of like, ah, he's here. He's working. He's a working guy. But I shouldn't get fined. I didn't do anything wrong. There's a mistake, a misunderstanding. But I went through the proper channels like, like a real businessman to do it the right way. That's all I want to say. Okay. Mr. McFarland, do you have any questions or a, any... any uh... No, just to, to add to that, I did reach out to Ms. Van this morning on the phone, and she stated it was supposed to be a banner on the building, not banner flags, not people in city right-of-way holding signs. That is all disqualified. I did go ahead and attach to my case notes the temporary ban code, the temporary signage code. And even that, he doesn't even qualify for the temporary signage code because that's reserved for new businesses. Okay. But Ms. Van did give him a pass because they were going out of business to have a banner on the building. Okay, and the, the signs we're talking about were the flutter? The feather signs along the right of way. That were in the right of way. The, the young lady that's holding signs along the city right of way. Yeah. Which is Those like are not permitted. Road. Okay. No, it's a service road. I'm not right on the main road. It's like the service road cut. But again, I didn't do anything. You do that to somebody who has no regard. That's not me. I try to go through the right channel. If there's a mistake, you shouldn't punish me with a fine. You, you don't promote me to say, hey, Neil Marcelino, the businessman who's been in our city for 25 years doing business, we're gonna hit you with a fine. That's not fair. I'm the guy who used to wash the fire department and the police guys' cars for free. You don't do that to me. That's not right. And I think you know that, Mr. McFarland, from the chief of that fire. I did everybody right here for 25 years. You over there put me in front of the thing like I'm like I'm like a kid going, "Hey, I'll do whatever I want to do." I'm not like that. The minute I knew that it wasn't going down, and 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 um, Alan called me, I did everything. I just went. I took him down. I said, "Forget it." But you're hurting me right now. Because me having something there gets attention. That building is like off in the cut. You can't even see it. So we should try to work out something as, as, like a, as a team because I've always been that way. It's like I've supported this city. You just don't do that to a guy who 25 years has had 20 businesses in, in the city of West Palm Beach. You don't do that. It's not fair. And if I have to pay it, I'll pay it. I'm a man, but I shouldn't have to pay it. Okay. Yeah. I want to also include, I did, I did give solutions to the owner. They can either put like, get like a banner car and circulate through the city to generate business, but it can't be done like that. I understand. And I got them all off of the road. I, know, I knew the girl in the front wasn't supposed to be there. That was only when I was gone. I know on Palm Beach Lakes, you can't hold a sign. I know that. So I, that was my, my team, and that's why when he came there, if he would have seen me, I know he wouldn't be here. He got, he got angry, and he had a right to be, because he felt like, man, I just told you guys, don't do this, and it's still here. And I understand that. But I'm here to represent myself and my business. Again, I'm a working man. I'm not no rich guy. It's like, you shouldn't do that to me. Right now, in these times, a $1,200 fine can be crushing. It's hard for me to pay the rent in that building. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate the... Um passionate advocacy on both sides of this case. Um, so nobody's disrespecting you or saying that, that you're a bad person or that that, that is absolutely not um, the case. Um, and the truth is my dealings with him in the past, he's a gentleman, I know that. So I, I, I don't even wanna be here, he's a gentleman. In my experience, everybody involved in this process uh, is a professional and, and has always, I've never seen anyone behave in any manner other than with complete professionalism. So um, let me do a couple housekeeping things. I do find proper notice in this case. Um, respondent is present. City has 
proper notice documents in its file. Um, all right, based on the testimony and the evidence, I'm going to find that the violation of 82144 regarding business tax receipt has complied. Uh, however, I am going to find that uh, there was a violation of City Code 94402B 1-6 and 2-5. Uh, I find that that violation existed for eight days. I find that that violation was a repeat based on the 2020 case that's in the record, which also showed that the 2020 case was a repeat. So, you know, I, I appreciate everything you said, sir, but this is the, the, the third time w within a few years. So, you know, at, at this point, uh, one, one wouldn't think that, um, you know, you can't do that. So um, That's why I, I am going to accept the city's permit. recommendation, um, a finding of a repeat violation. I'm going to assess the $150 fine for eight days uh, that, that, that the violation existed until uh, December 20th when it came into compliance. But, you know, this is the third time. Please don't do it again. And I'll sign that order. Done? 12 and 13. 12 and 13. Am I all done? Yes, sir. Thank you. So you gave us a fine, correct? Hmm? Looks like that. You gave the, so it's $1,200. Yes, sir. Correct. And then do I, have, do I have the right to appeal that or go to a hearing or something? I, I suggest you have speak appellate to rights that you can explore, yes. What was that? Yes, you have appellate okay. rights. You okay. can seek okay. legal counsel who can assist you with that. Okay. Yes. Sorry, say that again. Um, can we hear 12 and 13? I have um, a tenant for, for 12, and I have a respondent for um, 13. Okay. He was late. <laughs> Calling agenda item number 12. Case number is CE 22100453. Case address is 4171 North Haverhill Road, Unit 1009. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On 10-28, um, the property I received, I received a phone call from the tenant of Unit 4171 North Haverhill Road, Unit 1009. Uh, she was complaining of a leak and provided me with a video of said leak. Upon further investigation of the property, I noticed that there was no rental license on this property. So the, <clears throat> the property was sent cited for plumbing, repair leak of pipes in the garage, certificate of use, and rental license violation. The property was posted 1219. Certified mail was sent. 11-1, certified mail was received 11-4. Um, the property has since submitted an application for the rental license and fees paid, but has failed inspection due to fi failure of repairing the plumbing leak. Um, I, I do have the tenant that would like to testify to the documentation and photographs. Good morning, ma'am. Were you here when I swore everybody in? Yes, sir. You're placed under oath. Okay, go ahead and uh, yes. state your name and address, and then you can uh, proceed. My name is Tiffany Lewis. Address is 4171 North Haverhill Road, West Palm Beach, um, 33417, unit number 1009. Um, so I reached out to uh, Mr. Uh, McFarland 
um, because there is leakage in the garage and that leakage is sewer waste. I um, contact um, the property manager on several occasions, multiple emails, multiple pictures, um, even up to December 31st, it was still leaking. They sent me an email to say that it was resolved in another um, apartment um, because those apartment, those pipes belong to another unit. Um, but I emailed them on December 17th stating that the, the leak has not, um, leak has not been resolved. They have not gotten back to me. They have not said anything. And um, that's the end of the communication was the last communication was December um, 17th. Now, the leak occurs every time it rains and that's sewage water. So that's somebody's toilet water in, um, in the area and it creates a smell. And me being a healthcare provider, I know that um, it's hazardous to my health. Um, <clears throat> it creates a smell, it's all over the place. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm renting this um, particular area, which I absolutely shouldn't be using or cannot use because of the leakage and the storage. Okay. Special Magistrate, could I just ask a couple of questions of Ms. Lewis? Yep. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Yes, ma'am. Um, the video that we've been reviewing, is that a video that you took? Yes, ma'am. And has that video um, by you been altered in any way? No, ma'am. And you provided that video to Mr. McFarland, is that accurate? Yes, ma'am. Is there any other uh, videos or photographs or emails that you provided to Mr. McFarland? Um, I submitted other videos to him, but I didn't submit the emails, and I should have submitted the emails, the correspondence between I and the property manager. Thank you very much. I have no further questions. I'll, I'll just have questions for Mr. McFarlane. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your, your testimony, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Officer McFarlane. A couple of questions. Do you have an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes, ma'am. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes, ma'am. And was the notice of violation also posted at the property? Yes, ma'am. The photograph that's in the uh, uh, file, does that accurately and truthfully represent posting at this particular property? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. And special uh, map. Oh, I also sorry. I also want to uh, um, interject as well. Um, I did make several opportunities to try to reach out to to the owner. Um, I sent emails. I even made a phone call before I left for the day yesterday. Um, I did finally make contact with the owner but there was a language barrier there. So he referred me to his property manager and that phone number was provided on the application. So I made another attempt to reach out to her and she stated like what Ms. Lewis stated that it was all taken care of, but she's testifying that it's not. So um, I did let the young lady know that um, the case was moving forward today and what my intentions were, what the city's intentions were and what we're requesting. So with that being said, city's requesting 45 days to bring the property into compliance or $200 a day into compliance as achieved. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, um, photographs, videos, emails, and the rental application. All right, those documents are part of the record. Um, let me just, uh, you may have said it and I missed it. Ha has there even been an application at this point for the certificate or the? Yes, they have submitted an application. Okay. But it needs to pass the inspection, yeah. but due to the plumbing issue, it's it not gonna not pass. pass until the right. plumbing is so once closed. the plumbing issue is taken care of, then it can be reinspected, and then it can be issued. And in all likelihood, permits will be required on the plumbing? It may. Or maybe not. It may, it may or may not. Okay. It may be a simple repair. Okay. The only way it would be required a permit if they replace the entire plumbing system. All yeah. Right. Well, then I think 45 days is uh, reasonable. I, I, I believe so. Okay. All right. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent for this case? Um, all right. I do find proper notice 
with the uh, notice documents in the file, even though the respondent is not present. Um, based on the testimony and the evidence, including testimony from um, the city's uh, witness who's a resident at the property um, and the video that was provided, I will find that the property remains in violation as cited. I'm gonna accept the city's recommendation in this case, allow 45 additional days for compliance to be achieved, uh, getting the plumbing fixtures repaired and getting the uh, certificate and rental license inspections passed and get those um, issued. Uh, if compliance is not achieved within the 45 days, daily fines of $200 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number 13, case number is CE 22110152. Case address is 405 Executive Center Drive, Unit 108. Uh, before we proceed, uh, who needs to be sworn in? Respondent needs to be sworn in. Sorry? The respondent needs to be sworn in. He came in late. Okay. Um, good morning, sir. If you'll, um, do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. We'll be right back to you. I'm going to hear from Mr. McFarland first. Uh, good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. Um, on November 15th, 2020, um, I did receive a complaint from the tenant of 405 Executive Center Drive, Unit 108. Uh, property was cited for providing screens, repair of interior walls, uh, front door in need of weather stripping to make weather tight, uh, plumbing, master bath, tub not draining properly, equipment maintenance, the refrigerator is in need of repair or replacement, and electrical. Um, <clears throat> the property was posted Dece December 19th, 2020. Certified mail and regular mail was sent November 16th. Certified mail was received December 3rd. As of yesterday, the property has come into compliance with provide screens, repair interior walls, make weather tight. What was that one? Excuse me? What was the last one you just said? I'll start over. Um, provide window screenings. Got that one. Repair interior walls. Got that one. External doors and windows, make weather tight. Plum, plumbing, the, the tub has been repaired. It is now draining properly. And the electrical has been repaired. The only thing that remains is the equipment maintenance. Unfortunately, the fridge will need to be replaced. Um, I have been in contact with the, with the, the property rep representative and we're in agreement for 30 days to replace the, the refrigerator or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. Okay. Thank you very much, Officer McFarland. Just a couple of questions. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes, ma'am. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also posted at City Hall? Yes, ma'am. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you've observed at the property? Yes, ma'am. Could you just take a moment and describe in a little bit more detail um, the outstanding alleged violation regarding the refrigerator and why you believe it uh, needs to be replaced? Right there, okay. You see the seal. What happened is whosoever installed the refrigerator may have slightly bent the door because it's warped because he did come in and change the seal to that fridge and it's still not sealing. So I, I, I'm under the impression that that door is bent or the hinge may be bent and it's not gonna close properly and the, the tenant's food may go bad. So uh, I, that's why I'm recommending replacement of the refrigerator. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the entire case file. 
including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and all documents relied upon. All right, those documents um, will be made part of the record. Uh, let me go ahead and sir, get your name and address. Dwayne Barrett, and uh, I just 15514 on place. That's West okay. Palm Beach. And you are the owner representative. Property owner? Yes, sir. Do you have any um, comments or objections to any of the documents that the city has put up on the screen that are no. made part of the record? No, no, no. Um, we no, tried to fix the fridge, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm completely in agreement with Mr. McCarlin about that. We're going to change by a brand, brand new fridge. And um, you're in agreement with the uh, recommendation to get, to get this done in 30 days? Yes, we're in the process of getting a brand new fridge um, this week. Okay, so you shouldn't have any problem with the 30-day deadline. Not at, not at all. All right, I appreciate that. Is there anything else you want to tell me, sir? No, sir. All right. Thank uh, you. Anything else from have the good city? Day. That's it. Okay, uh, the city has proper notice in this case uh, with the received certified mail. Respondent is also present at today's hearing. Based on the testimony and evidence, I will find that the alleged violation of 18103I regarding equipment maintenance remains, but that all other violations cited in the notice have complied. I'll allow 30 additional days to cure the outstanding violation. Uh, after that, though, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved, so you wanna make sure you get that 30 days, yes, sir. get it done within the 30 days, you don't want the fines. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you, sir. Yeah. Agenda item number 28. Is that correct? Case number is CE2209-0204. Case address is 427 Coniston Road. Good morning, Sonia Bin, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. This property was cited on September 20, 2022. The notice of violation. We need to be sworn in. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. I'll be, I'm going to finish hearing from this. Oh, you need to be sworn in, too? Yes. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing yes. but the truth? Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'll be right back to you in just a second as soon as uh, the city's concluded its presentation. Go Thank ahead. you for remembering. Right, um, Sonia Bin, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. Mm -hmm. This property was cited on September 20th. 2022 notice of violation was posted on september 21st 2022 at the property and city hall and it was received by the owner certified mail was sent on september 21st 2022 the property was cited for landscape maintenance missing um address uh character and also visible to the public and a landscape area must be um, sawed. Today, um, the property owner is present and I had the opportunity to speak with the property owner. The property owner is in agreement with the city's recommendation. As of yesterday, the code 7861 and 7865, <coughs> excuse me, are complied. However, um, Codes 18106K and 94442C1 is out of compliance. The city um, is requesting an additional 30 days to gain compliance or $100 per day until uh, compliance is achieved. Uh, during our conversation um, prior, um, before presenting, I explained to the property owner of different um, approved plant materials um, to comply the, um, the landscape of the property. Thank you. Officer Benz, just a couple of questions. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Correct. And that affidavit, does it reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Correct. Thank you. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately represent the alleged uh, violations that you observed at the property? Correct. And can you just take a very quick minute and just describe to us what it is you observed about the landscape maintenance 
um, and the landscape areas. Sure. So um, in the photos, um, a high percent of the landscape are covered um, with white rocks. Um, as well as in the photo, they were missing um, the address characters there as well. And you're seeing the, the for the alleged violations still outstanding with the landscaping. Um, what we're seeing in the photos, is that front and both sides or where were you seeing that? So the front and the side. <coughs> the property owner um, went ahead and planned some plant materials, but it's not fully covered. So I explained to the owner to add more. So the 75% that is required per city code um, to grant, to gain compliance of the front of the landscape that is missing the ground covering. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the uh, case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any other documents relied upon. All right, thank you. Uh, those documents um, will be made part of the record. Sir, go ahead and tell me your name and address, please. Uh, Joseph Sheeran, I'm the owner of 427 Coniston Road. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Sheeran. Do you have any uh, objections to any of the documents that uh, the city has shown up on the screen uh, being included in the record for this hearing? No, I had a great conversation okay. and she clarified everything that I, I need to uh, accomplish to come in compliance. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fill in more plant material, take the rocks out and comply. And um, you're in agreement with the 30 day time frame? You can get yes, it done sir. within that 30 days? Okay. Yes, sir. All right, uh, is there anything else you'd like to tell me, sir? All right. nope. Anything else from the city? No. Okay. Um, city does have proper notice with uh, the posting and the certified mail. Respondent is present at today's hearing. Based on the testimony and the evidence that I have um, reviewed, I find that the property has complied with city code 78-6-1 and 78-6-5, but remains in violation of city code 18-106-K and 94-442-C1. I will go ahead and uh, allow the additional 30 days for compliance. Um, after that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. So you wanna make sure you get it done within the 30 days. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any additional respondents signed in. Are you here for a lien reduction hearing? Okay. <clears throat> So agenda item number two, case number is CE22050326. Case address is 741 Canuga Drive and it's complied. Agenda item number four, case number is CE22110106. Case address is 1068 36th Street. Good morning, J. Francis, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance. Um, 1068 36th Street was cited on 11 422. Um, service was accomplished by certified mail sent on 11 722. Both the property and city hall were posted on 12 822. Um, I have been in contact with the owner. The property is cited for junk and inoperative vehicle. As of this morning, the property has not come into compliance. Therefore, the city is asking for an additional 15 days for them to come into compliance. If they do not come into compliance, then the city is asking for $50 a day until compliance is achieved. Thank you, Officer Francis. Just a couple of questions. Is sure. there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes, ma'am. And does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes, ma'am. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violation that you've observed at the property? Yes, ma'am. And based on the photographs, is it just the uh, the 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 car, the sedan, or the, is it the, also the minivan? Yeah, the minivan and the Volkswagen. Um, what is it about the minivan that makes it junk or abandoned? Um, the tag is expired. Okay, and we can see and is it on a, the I other think one. They that had a covering on the front. I don't know if they removed it. I'm sorry, sir. There was a covering on the front at one point. I, I, we can't hear you. I apologize. Yeah, the expired tag and there's a covering on the front. I don't think I got a good one. There's a covering on the front. Okay, I apologize. And then on the car, we see the flat tires. Flat tires on the Volkswagen. And the tag is also expired as well. Okay. And um, is 
And did you observe this on multiple days? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the entire case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any other documents relied upon. Those documents are made part of the record in this case. Uh, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? City has proper notice with the posting and certified mail, even though the respondent is not present at today's hearing. Based on the testimony and the evidence, uh, I do find property remains in violation as cited. I'll allow 15 additional days for compliance. After that, daily fines of $50 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Agenda item number five, case number is CE 22110169. Case address is 207 Nottingham Boulevard. Hello, good morning. Uh, Richard morning. Pasmino, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This property was cited November 30th, uh, 2022. Certified mail was sent out December 1st. It was signed received for on December 3rd, 2022. In addition, the city, city hall and property were both posted on December 5th of 2022. This property was cited for um, irreparable violation, hat racking, and tree abuse. I made contact with the owner this morning um, via the phone. She explained that she cut, the, well, the tree was trimmed because it had termites. Um, I explained, you know, it's not allowed. The tree's gonna die. And because of her family and her house is sick, she couldn't attend today's hearing. Um, with that being said, the city's asking for a finding of fact that this property was found in violation of these city codes, and the city's asking for a $50 one-time fine. The tree's gonna have to be removed. Um, it's, it's past the point of the So they just remove it, that'll be that'll comply in the case? Or they yeah. have to remove it and replace it with something? No, they can't replace it because it, it's in the parkway. Oh, yeah. okay. So compliance requires, I mean, they'll pay the fine, but yeah, pay the fine and remove the, well, I didn't cite landscaping, so I would just, okay. just the fine for the tree okay. abuse. Thank you, Officer Pasbino. Just a couple of questions, and I apologize, I may have missed this. Do you have an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes, yeah, it was completed and, and turned in. And does the notice of violation, ref, uh, excuse me, does it reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes. And the photographs that we reviewed, do they truthfully and accurately represent and depict the alleged violation you observed at the property? Yes. Thank you so much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the entire case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any uh, uh, documents relied upon. Uh, those documents are made part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? All right, city has proper notice with the uh, signed certified mail, even though the respondent is not present at today's hearing. Based on testimony and the evidence, I will find the property uh, remains in violation uh, as cited. I will um, assess a one-time fine of $50 for the violation. Thank you. Agenda item number six, case number is CE2211246. Case address is 639 Glen Ridge Drive. That case is complied. I thought it was removed, yeah. Six, it's complied? Complied, yes. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, agenda item number seven. Case number is CE2210355. Case address is 702 43rd Street, Unit A. It's rescheduled. Agenda item number eight. Case number is CE2212109. Case address is 704 40th Street, and it's also rescheduled. Agenda item number nine. Case number is CE2210385. Case address is 534 Deter Street. Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach. Um, property 534 Day Tour was initially cited on 1025-22. Certified mail was sent on 10-26-22. Uh, we do have a signed certified mail uh, receipt on file. Uh, City Hall was posted on 10-26-22. Uh, property was initially cited for 18103B, 18103I, uh, 18106G, 18-95-A, and 74-4-C-5. As of uh, last evening, the following sections have complied. 
18103I, 18-95-A, and also 74-4-C-5. Um, I have um, spoken with the property, um, well, she's the facility manager, I should say, Mrs. Uh, Nichelle Williams, on multiple occasions with regard to this uh, facility. Um, it's a pretty uh, large building. Um, the west side of the building still needs some stucco repair and also some painting, um, which if you look at the photos from last evening, um, those photos do indicate that. Um, I also spoke with the owner of the property on last evening, um, and we um, spoke about uh, some additional time being extended in order to bring the property into compliance. And so um, the city is amenable to granting an additional 45 days in order to comply or fine of uh, $50 per day be imposed. Thank you. Officer Williams, a couple of questions, and I may have missed it. I apologize. Is there an executed affidavit posted in your file? Yes, there is. And does that affidavit reflect the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? It does. And was the property posted? Yes. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you observed at the property? Yes, they do. And you had briefly mentioned um, that external, well, you had said 18. 103i did you mean 18103e that is correct okay yeah, and I, I may have heard it yes, wrong but yes, i just wanted I to clarify correct it. so uh, that's complied e is e is complied say again sir that's complied yes it is okay so the ones that the alleged violation still outstanding would be um under 18103b and 18106g is that accurate that is correct okay and with respect um you told us a little bit about the um, the stucco. Um, so are we seeing are we seeing painting and and work on the sides of the building where we saw the cinder blocks? Is right. It, is um, it that what is, are we seeing? That is more so. That's like a like a little alcove area to the on the west side of the building, uh, the upper ceiling area there. Uh, some of the stucco is damaged. Um, um, they were in process on last evening, uh, making repairs to that stucco, and also the west side of the building is going to re require some painting as well. And that was the only thing that was uh, outstanding. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. These documents are made part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? The city has proper notice with the signed certified mail, even though the respondent is not present at today's hearing. Based on the testimony and the evidence uh, that I've reviewed, I find the property remains in violation of city code sections 18103B and 18106G, but has complied with all other code sections that were cited in the notice. I'll allow 45 additional days for compliance. After that, daily fines of $50 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Agenda item number 10, case number is CE22110250, case address is 500 Banyan Boulevard. Oh, sorry. Um, Mike Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach, uh, property 500 Banyan Boulevard, also known as Subculture, uh, was initially cited on 11-30-22. Uh, certified mail was sent on 12-6-22. Uh, we do have a signed certified uh, mail receipt on file. Uh, City Hall was posted on 12-5-22. The notice was hand delivered to the uh, general manager um, on duty at that time. Uh, her name is uh, Lindsay Creech. Um, property was cited for, let's see, 78-1, uh, obstruction of the right-of-way, and 78-152, uh, special events permit required. Um, <clears throat> there was an event that was hosted on 11-17-22, which was a Thursday evening. Um, by subculture. 
um, the violations were uh, personally observed by uh, a couple members of um, the community events uh, department here with the city, um, um, Mrs. Uh, Angela Poco and Mary Panak. Um, and so subsequently, the city did receive, well, our, our department rather, the Code Enforcement Division, subsequently received an email on 11-18-22 uh, um, that was re received from Mr. Armando Fana, who's the Assistant City Administrator. And so, um, and so um, the individual from community events can provide some additional details in terms of what was uh, observed. There's a, there's a couple photos that, um, that were submitted to us uh, from the community events uh, personnel. And again, she can provide uh, more details and insight in terms of what she witnessed as I did not uh, witness any of the alleged violations. Okay. Good morning. Morning. Angela Poco, Community Events. Yes, ma'am. Were you sworn in when I? I was. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, this uh, event has been a reoccurring event for several years. Uh, we notified them back in 2019 that they would need to pull a permit, and then COVID came after that, so things kind of relaxed a little bit, and they didn't happen for a while, and then they started them up again, and I've taken several photos of that particular event. Um, in the process, since this was all served to them, um, a private person came in and applied for an event permit for this. The permit was issued, um, and they were given permission to begin having and hosting the event again December 22nd. Okay, but this was before that. Correct. Gotcha. I have a couple of questions for Ms. Poco. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, the photographs that we've been reviewing, um, do you know who took those photographs? Um, yeah, my office did. Okay. And um, did you observe um, these events as well? I did, yeah. Okay. And um, I just want to make sure that the event permit that you're talking about has been actually issued and it's applicable to this type of an event that they're doing. Is that it is. accurate? Yes. And how many, that particular permit... Um, what will it allow in terms of just one more event or um, multiple right now recurring? They are permitted through April, give me one second, from December 22nd to May 3rd. Um, the use of the alley uh, from 4 to 9.30 for the event from 5 to 9. Okay. And so will that include, I think in the photograph, we saw them also kind of not only in the alley, but... I don't know if they spilled out into the we sidewalk area. We did give area. them um, m perimeters of where they could be. They couldn't block the right of way. They couldn't be on the sidewalk. Um, so, very good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any further questions for Ms. Poco. I do have some questions for Mr. Williams. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Williams. Um, just a couple of questions um, in regard to. Um, the, your file, is there an executed affidavit of posting? Yes, there is. And was the notice of violation also sent by regular mail? Yes, it was. And other than the photos that um, Ms. Poco's office um, took and provided, are there any other photographs um, that you took? Um, there were no photos uh, that I have taken. Okay, very good. Um, And other than the emails um, that we talked about and the event permit that Ms. Poco talked about and the photos, are there any other documents um, that you know of off the top of your head that we should discuss, if any? Um, no, there's, there's actually a couple of, um, there's an email thread that's uh, actually attached to the case that um, there was some discussion um, with with regard to these events uh, happening um, on prior occasions and there was no uh, permitting uh, involved. And so in light of that, um, I think um, what we wanted to, to do is uh, establish um, a finding of fact 
um, and as opposed to asking for a fine or a lien, um, a fine, um, I should say, um, what the city wants to do is uh, going forward prohibit any any uh, further unauthorized use of the city's right of ways and uh, failures to you know secure um, event permits. It sounds like they have some uh, coverage there for some events going forward, but beyond that, um, we want to be sure that this is not happening. And in the event that it does happen again, um, there has been a finding of fact uh, that a violation did occur, yep. as it has already occurred, and so therefore it, it would be you know considered uh, irreversible or irreparable. Um, thank you, Officer Williams. Um, there's also, um, I think I saw in there a note, the notice of violation that was signed by Lindsay Creech, mm -hmm. the manager, yes. showing that she received the hand delivery of the notice. Is that accurate? Absolutely. Yes, it is. And um, just uh, for the record, if you, can you go back up so can you see? Just for the notice of record, um, um, the notice was actually um, sent in the name of uh, subculture at 509 Clemata Street. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. Um, also, for the record, 500 Banyan is, is actually a city-owned property, and it's, um, and Subculture actually rents out this particular suite. Okay. So it's, it's actually the city's property, okay. um, which, is, which is being rented out by Subculture, and they use an address of 509 Clematis. Uh, although the legal address of the property is 500 Banyan. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the claim file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, emails, the permit application, the permit, and any and all other documents relied upon. Right. Documents are made part of the record. Um, so at the point in time that the notice was provided, the event had already happened. Absolutely. Done, ended, and, and was. Yes. Okay. So um, is the city recommending the imposition of a, a fine based on the irreparable and irreversible violation? Well, or, well or no? um, again, basically, you know, um, you know, the violation is considered, you know, irreparable as, it, as it's already occurred. And so the city just wants to establish a, a finding of fact. Okay. And and so if it happens again going forward, um, you know, then the city could potentially ask for a fine, and also um, maybe even look at um, revocation of the um, um, lease that um, that's established between the city and subculture um, for them to use the alleyway space. Okay. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? All right, you've got the trifecta of notice for this case. You got the certified mail, the posting, and the hand delivery. Uh, so it's definitely have proper notice, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence that I've heard, I do find that the property um, did violate city code section 78-1 and 78-152. I find that those violations um, were irreparable and irreversible in nature, although they do, are no longer in violation. Um, so there is a finding of fact that the property was in violation, is now in compliance, um, and that the violations were irre irreparable and irreversible in nature. Um, no fine is assessed at this time, and I think that's all we need to do with this one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Agenda item number 11, case number is CE2212-0141. Case address is 2458 South Australian Avenue. Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach, property 2458 South Australian Avenue, um, which is a vacant lot, was initially cited on 1214-22. Certified mail was sent on 1215-22. We do have a signed certified mail receipt on file. City Hall was posted on 12 15 22. 
property was cited for 18106A, clean and sanitary, 18106I, litter, trash, and debris, um, and 94-6, restrictions upon land use. Um, um, again, this is a vacant lot, um, which currently um, is kind of um, trashed by what is believed to be some, some homeless individuals. And so um, I've received multiple complaints about it. Um, I even went, went to the extent of contacting the owner of the property via the phone. Um, he and I spoke, um, that was on 1222. The owner of the property uh, is, is Mr. Paul J um, J Jitziniak, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, we spoke over the phone. Um, I explained to him the urgency of getting someone out to um, clean the property as soon as possible um, as the conditions are uh, really uh, horrible. Um, and I also sent an email at, to him as a, as a follow-up, um, and he did reply back with an email giving uh, some updated contact information with regard to individuals with the company. Uh, that, that could be contacted going forward. Um, that said, um, as of last evening, the violations still do uh, exist on the property. Um, in speaking to Mr. Uh, Jadziniak, he indicated that he had changed um, maintenance companies, and so he has a new uh, maintenance company, and it sounds like um, there might be some delay uh, that's what it sounds like to me, but he is aware of the time frame involved in, well, the time constraint, I should say, uh, in terms of uh, complying the property. But again, as of last evening, all of the violations at the property uh, continue to exist. Thank you. Officer Williams, a couple of questions. Is there an et um, executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes, sir. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes. And was the property posted? Yes, it was. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you observed at the property? Yes, they do. And in the photographs, we observed an abundant amount of uh, trash, debris, and other refuse, is that accurate? Yes. All over the property, basically? Yes. And we also saw um, at least one tent um, um, has there been any progress at all on the property? Um, uh, there has been literally no progress. If anything, it's, it, it, it appears to be getting uh, progressively worse. Okay. And, um, and what time frame and, and well, um, were you seeking? As I said, the, um, this notice was initially sent out on 12 14 22 um, <coughs> what I would like to request, um, uh, in light of the fact that, um, you know, we, we do have homeless persons living on this vacant lot that have created some extremely gross and, uh, unsanitary and un unsightly conditions. Um, what I'd like to request is a seven days, uh, in order to, uh, comply the property, um, or a one-time fine of $2,000. Um, and also get um, an abatement in order in the event that um, the owner does not uh, comply with the seven-day time frame. Is the abatement just in regards to the alleged violation of clean and sanitary and litter, or is it um, it's not for removing the homeless people? Um, no, just for the uh, clean, clean and, uh, and sanitary issues. Okay. And do you believe that the... Um, status of this property is an attractive nuisance and otherwise a health, safety, and welfare um, Yes, concern. I do. Um, you know, with, you know, with regard to, I mean, there's, there's like all types of stuff in there. There's, there's food, there's just all kinds, of, there's flies, um, um, and obviously rats and uh, vermin and, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's just, you know, really gross and, um, uh, super uh, un unsightly. Um, not to mention that it it it's boarding bordering you know um, one of the main thoroughfares. Thank you very much. 
Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, emails, and any and all other documents relied upon. Those documents are made part of the record. Um, Mr. Williams, I have a question for you. When did you have your, your um, conversation with the property owner? On December 22nd. Um, um, we spoke we spoke over the phone and and also as a as a follow-up um, I emailed him and then he subsequently emailed me back with um, updated um, um, contact information when you spoke to him did, was, did you advise him about the um, the homeless individual or with the yes tent? I did in fact um, the the email is is a part of the uh, record there I I also sent him uh, photographs um, as well. I think, um, um, if my memory serves me correctly, I sent him like six or seven uh, okay. photographs. Do you know if, as a result of that communication, a law enforcement was called to um, do trespass um, warnings or anything like that? Not to my knowledge. And, and as of today, that, that, that issue is still... Uh, so as the property owner is aware of it and he hasn't... He's, uh, he's aware of it, yes. Okay. Um, but... Um, as stated, as of last evening, the the tent is still there. Okay. All right. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent in this case? All right. Um, I will find proper notice with the certified mail and the posting. Uh, I also am going to find that um, the condition of the property constitutes a threat to the public health, safety, and welfare. Um, so there is certainly proper notice under the circumstances. Um, based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation as cited. And, and the reason for my questions, I, you know, I wanted to make sure that on the 94-6 violation, the restriction on land use, um, the respondent is aware of it and appears to be complicit and hasn't done anything to rectify that. So I am going to find um, that violation um, as well as the uh, clean and sanitary and the trash and debris. Um, again, I do find that 18106A and 18106I constitute a threat to the public health, safety, and welfare. I'll allow the respondent seven days to comply. Um, after that, a one-time fine of $2,000 is assessed. The city is also authorized after the seven days to enter the property, abate the clean and sanitary and the litter and trash and debris violations and assess those costs. So, thank you. Agenda item number 15, case number is CE2209-0345. Case address is 3402 Floral Ave. Good morning, Alex Oliver, Code Enforcement Officer for the City of West Palm. Um, this property was cited on 10-28-22. Uh, service was accomplished by certified mail on 10-31-22. The certified mail was signed and returned, I mean signed on 1122 uh, 11 in addition the property was cited and and city hall was po were posted on 10 31 22 and there has been no contact with the owner of the property there is an affidavit of a posting in the file and the property was cited for 74 4c4 which is obstructing the right of way um if you can see the pictures um there's this came in as a complaint for um, of sanitation. They they can't get the trucks go through the alley. I mean the street and the both streets. There's no alley there, and um, and, and there's also constructions going on. So it's like very heavy the traffic uh, street. So as of the as of today, there's the violations have been addressed uh, partially. If you can look at the pictures of. Uh, the most recent pictures, they did cut some trees, but they didn't cut all the way in. So if there happens to be another truck and uh, another vehicle on the street, it will be very difficult for them to move around. So it's still obstructed, even though they tried to cut some, they haven't contacted the city so we can specify how, how far back they need to go. Okay. So they tried, so but they didn't quite get there. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So uh, the city is requesting an, an additional 60 days for them to come into compliance and contact us. Um, if not, $100 a day until compliance is achieved. 
Did you say 30 days? 60. 60? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks officer. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, just a couple more questions, and I may have missed it. Um, does the affidavit of posting reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes, ma'am. And I just wanted to clarify and make sure was the property posted? Yes. Thank you. And the photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you've observed at the property? Yes. Thank you. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the entire case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents are part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? All right. City has proper notice with the notice documents in the file, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence I've reviewed, I find the property remains in violation as cited. I will allow 60 additional days to cure the violation. After that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Agenda item number 16, case number is CE2210290. Case address is 412 28th Street. Good morning, Alex Oliver, Code Enforcement Officer for the City of West Palm Beach. Uh, this property was cited on 11-22-2022. Uh, there was a courtesy notice sent to them on 10-20-2022. Service was accomplished by certified mail on 11-23-2022. Uh, certified mail was signed on 12-05-22. Um, in addition, uh, property and city hall were posted on 11-23-2022. Uh, um, there has not been any contact with the owner uh, uh, with this property, and there is a affidavit of posting in the file. This property was cited for 786, uh, which is address characters missing, but this is on an alleyway. Um, as of this morning, the property has not come into compliance, and therefore the city is asking for an additional 30 days or uh, $100 a day until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Officer Oliver, did you say $100 a day? Yes. Okay. And just a couple of questions. Does the affidavit of posting reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes. And the photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violation you observed at the property? Yes. And with respect to um, these address characters, based on um, the photographs that we saw, is it actually on the garage? The picture is in the back of the alleyway. The front has, uh, I mean, the, the seat is fine. I mean, the front of the property inside is fine. It's just the back end is missing the address character. Okay. And the, the code requires for this particular property characters on the back? Yes. Okay, and do you know why it requires characters on the back? For uh, first respondents, uh, utilities, and... and Thank you very much. Here. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. All right, those documents are made part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? All right, the city has proper notice with the signed certified mail, even though the respondent is not present at today's hearing. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll allow 30 additional days to comply. After that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Agenda item number 17, case number is CE2210290. Case address is 412 28th Street. Is that a duplicate of the prior one? Yeah, it is. It's a duplicate. Thanks. Agenda item number 18. Case, case number is CE2210113. Case address is 732 19th Street. Good morning. Officer Underwood, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, case address 732 19th Street was uh, certified, or excuse me, was uh, initially cited October 11th, 2022. Service certified mail was sent out on November 16th. Uh, City Hall on the property was posted November 16th. And certified mail was signed and returned November 18th, 2022. Uh, I have not been in contact with this owner. And the property was cited for excessive growth and clean and sanitary <laughs> conditions. Uh, up until this day, I have not been in contact with property owner. 
and it is not in compliance still. And the city's requesting 10 days additional, $400 per day thereafter. I'm sorry, I think I missed a little bit of what you were saying. Um, so just bear with me. Is there an executed affidavit of posted in your file? Yes, there is. And does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes, it does. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you've observed on the property? Yes. Uh, could you just tell us a little bit more about what you did observe? Or just tell us what we were seeing in the photographs, for the uh, record. Overgrowth, grass, weeds, bushes, and trash and debris. Even and this is a vacant lot? It is a vacant lot, correct. Okay. And even though you've not had any contact, has there been any um, progress on the on the so lot? So this initially started off as a, as a courtesy note, courtesy letter. I gave them 30 days. It looks like they had came out and cut the grass, made an attempt to cut the grass, but left all the resident boulders and bolt blocks and trash and debris there and just have neglected it since. So we took it to magistrate and here we are again. Still overgrown, still trash and debris, still a nuisance. Okay, thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents uh, are part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? All right, with the signed certified mail, the city has proper notice even though the respondent is not present. Based on testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll allow the respondent 10 additional days to comply. After that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Agenda item number 19, case number is CE2210229, case address 907 21st Street. Officer Underwood, City West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, property address 7907 21st Street was initially cited on October 18th, 2022. Certified mail was sent out December 1st, 2022. City Hall and property was posted December 5th. Uh, certified letter was signed uh, December 3rd. I have not been in contact with this property owner either. Um, and this still, as of yesterday, has not come into compliance. So the city is seeking an extra 10 days or $100 per day till the property comes into compliance. Thank you very much. Just a couple of questions. Does your file contain an executed affidavit of posting? Yes, it does. Does the, post, uh, does the affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Correct, yes. And the photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you've observed at the property? Yes, they do. And just for the record, uh, to clarify, can you just tell us what, we've, what we're looking at? Property was cited for overgrowth and trash and debris. And obviously, it's new construction, newer construction, and they just have neglected to take care of the, the property since the start of construction. And this, again, was a uh, started off as a courtesy note, courtesy letter, and was given 30 days with no contact, no nothing, which turned into a magistrate hearing. So 10 days or $100 per day thereafter. Um, I see the overgrowth. Can you point me to the trash and debris? Should be on the up in, inside those bushes up there underneath that front window. There's trash and debris, and alongside the hedgerow. I should have took better pictures of the hedgerow, but okay, very good. There's bottles and papers. Yeah. The grass and weeds are pretty tall, as you can see. Yeah, alongside okay. the house, in, in those bushes, there's bottles and stuff in there. If you're if you're there, you can see it. I don't know why it didn't show up on the camera. Thank you very much, Special Magistrate. The city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. All right, thank you. Those documents are part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? City has proper notice, even though the respondent is not present, uh, based on the notice documents in the file. 
Uh, I will find, uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, that the property remains in violation as cited. I'll allow 10 additional days for the respondent to comply. After that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Agenda item number 20, case number is CE 22100375. Case address is 723 19th Street. Officer Underwood, City West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Property address 723 19th Street was initially cited on October 25th, 2022. Cer certified mail was sent out October 1st. City Hall and property were posted December 5th. Uh, certified mail was returned. December 7th, uh, this property was cited for clean and sanitary conditions, excessive growth, and cleanup to the center of the right of way. Uh, I have not been in contact with this owner, and as of yesterday, the property is still not in compliance. The city is requesting 10 days, the initial 10 days, or $100 per day for this property to come into compliance. Thank you. Officer Underwood, is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes, there is. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yep. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you observed at the property? Yes, they do. Could you take a moment and just uh, for the record, let it, uh, tell us what we're seeing in the photographs? Uh, just excessive overgrowth with the grass, trees, and bushes and along the, the fence hedgerow right there. Um, trash and debris, which is the blocks and the, the metal, the debris, and all the stuff along the, well, that also, but along the perimeter of the west side where the fence is. They cleaned up some of it and then took it all out to the street where that picture was just a minute ago, the pile out in the apron. Keep going back. Keep going. Yep, that right there. So, and that was left there for two or three weeks that pile in the street right there without having a special pickup or anything done so never complied and underneath of all that there's all kinds of trash and debris in that pile that's still there so as of today everything is still outstanding correct okay thank you very much special magistrate the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file including but not limited to the notice of violation affidavit of posting certified mailing documents photographs and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you, those documents are part of the record. Is there any, anybody here on behalf of the respondent? All right, the city has proper notice with the notice documents in the file, even though the respondent is not present at today's hearing. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation as cited. I will allow the respondent 10 additional days to comply. After that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Thanks. Agenda item number 21, case number CE2210421, case address 625 Belvedere Road. Good morning, Officer Williams, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, the property at 625 Belvedere Road was originally cited October 27, 2022. Uh, the regular as well as certified mail was sent out October 28, 2022. Uh, that was returned November 3, 2022. Uh, the property as well as City Hall was posted on December 8th, 2022, and an affidavit of posting was prepared and placed in the case file. Uh, to date, I've had no contact with the owner. Uh, they were originally cited for 18106B for excessive growth of the uh, landscape materials there, 18106I for litter, trash, and debris that was scattered throughout the parking lot on the property, as well as 78-6 for the, uh, there were no uh, address characters posted on the building. Uh, as of yesterday, 18106I, the litter, trash, and debris has been uh, cleared. Uh, however, uh, the other two violations are still present at the property, the excessive growth, as well as numbering standards needed to be placed on the building. Uh, the city is requesting 15 additional days to bring the property into compliance or a $100 a day fine thereafter. Thank you, Officer Williams. Um, the photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent uh, the alleged uh, violations that you've observed at the property? Yes, ma'am. And with respect to the numbering characters, um, because it's a building and not a single family home, is it just, um, it's still one address or one set of characters? Is that what I'm hearing? Correct, but there, yeah, there, there's none on the building at whatsoever. Okay. And um, do they need them on the front and the back or just the front? Uh, on the front would be nice since it, the property faces uh, Belvedere Road there. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. 
Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing document, photographs, and any and all documents relied upon. All right, those documents are made part of the record. Is uh, anybody here on behalf of the respondent? With the posting following the return certified mail, the city has proper notice, even though the respondent is not present. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find that the property remains in violation of City Code 18106B and 78-6, but has complied with 18106I. I will uh, order 15 additional days to cure the outstanding violations. After that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Agenda item number 22, case number is CE2211093, case address is 1024 Avon Road. Officer Williams, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, the property here at 1024 Avon Road was originally cited November 3rd, 2022. Regular as well as certified mail was sent out November 4th, 2022. Uh, that was returned December 6th, 2022. Uh, the property as well as City Hall was posted on December 8th, 2022. An affidavit of posting was prepared and placed in the case file. Uh, to date, I've had no contact with the owner. Uh, they were originally cited for 7434-A-1-J for the garbage can being in view of the public, as well as 94-71-C for the various outdoor stores that we see there under the carport and on the side of the home. Uh, as of this morning, all violations are still present at the property. Uh, the city is requesting 15 additional days to bring the property into compliance or a $50 a day fine thereafter. Thank you, Officer Williams. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you've observed at the property? Yes, ma'am. And um, basically what we're seeing, um, we see the trash can that's out next to the fence, correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, in addition, you talked about the items that were in the carport. I may have missed. Were there other items as well, other areas? Uh, just uh, under the carport and then just... Uh, to the east of the home there on, on the side of the home. Okay, and multiple different types of, of stuff there, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Thank you. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents are made part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? Respondent is not present. However, the city has proper notice with the certified mail and posting. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation as cited. I will allow 15 additional days to cure the violations. After that, daily fines of $50 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Agenda item number 23, case number is CE2211094. <coughs> case address is 922 Ardmore Road. Officer Williams, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, the property here at 922 Ardmore Road was originally cited on November 3rd, 2022. Regular as well as certified mail was sent uh, November 4th, 2022, that was returned December 6th, 2022. Uh, the property as well as City Hall was posted on December 8th, uh, 2022, and an affidavit of posting was prepared and placed in the case file. I've had no contact with the owner. Uh, they were originally cited for 9471-C for outdoor storage, uh, the items that are stored under the carport, as well as 94442-C-1 for uh, side needed in the front yard, as well as the swell of the property. As of this morning, all violations are still present at the property. Uh, the city is requesting 30 additional days to bring the property into compliance or a $50 a day fine thereafter. What fine are you recommending? Uh, 30 days or $50, 50 a day. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Williams. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you've observed at the property? Yes, ma'am. And just for the record, could you just tell us um, a little bit more about what we're looking at? So one of the pictures uh, that we're looking at right here, we see the different areas in the lawn that need to be sodded. Uh, we can see the gra the uh, dirt and sand there, as well as the, the swell as well, as in the same condition. Um, and then there are just a few items that are stored under the carport that just need to be moved, weight, a weight bench, uh, various weights and other items. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents are made part of the record. Um, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? 
respondent is not present. However, the city has proper notice with the posting following the returned certified mail. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll allow 30 additional days to comply. After that, daily fines of $50 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you, sir. Agenda item number 24, case number is CE2210338. Case address is 524 Still Boulevard and it's complied. Agenda item number 25, case number is CE2211081. Case address is 366 Colonial Road and it's also complied. Agenda item number 26, case number is CE2211024. Case address is 6108 South Dixie Highway, Unit 5B, and it's complied. Agenda item number 27, case number CE2212156. Case address 6907 Norton Ave, and it's also complied. Agenda item number 29, case number is CE2210006. CE2210060. Case address is 628 Montesu Road. Sony Benz, uh, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. This property was cited on October 6, 2022. Notice a violation was posted at the property in City Hall on October 7th, <coughs> excuse me, 2022. Certified mail was sent on October 6, 2022. The property was cited for codes 18106K, 34102A, 74C4, 78, <coughs> 94C, and 9471C. <coughs> I have not made contact um, with the property owner. As of yesterday, the property is still out of compliance for all code, code cited except for code 7894C is complied. The city is requesting additional 30 days to gain compliance or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Thank you, Officer Benz. Just a couple of questions. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes. And does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you observed at the property? Yes. With respect to those that are still outstanding, could you um, just take a moment and <coughs> tell us on the record what it is you observed? Sure. So, um, the property was cited for landscape maintenance as well as <coughs> um, landscape of the swale and also trimming of the hedges and trees um, obstructing um, the right of way on the sidewalk. The property landscape was cut, however, the hedges are still out of compliance. Um, the inoperable vehicle is still on the property. The property was also uh, cited for outdoor storage, and in the photos, you're able to see um, outdoor s storage such as like plastic containers, furnitures, um, car tires, boards, and stuff like that. Washer and dryer in the front and the side of the property. Thank you. The, um, the junk or abandoned vehicle, is it that gold vehicle that looks like it's been in a car yeah. crash? Yes. Is it any other vehicle on the property or just that gold one? I think both are inoperable. Do you know about the other one? What makes it junk or abandoned? Well, the the blue um, vehicle, um, the tag is also expired that I noticed when I reinspect the property. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case, case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents are made part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? Respondent is not present, but the city has proper notice with the notice documents contained in the file. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find that the property remains in violation as cited with the exception of City Code uh, 7894C, which has complied. I will allow 30 additional days to cure the outstanding violations. After that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Agenda item number 30, case number is CE2210066. Case address is 619 Avenida Allegra. Sonia Bin, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. This property was cited on October 6, 2022. 
notice a violation was posted at the property and at City Hall on October 7, 2022. Certified mail was, present, was sent on October 7, 2022. The property was cited for code 18106K 7434A1H and 9471C. I have not made contact with the property owner. As of yesterday, the property is still out of compliance for code 9471C. Based on the photos, um, it still have boxes um, still um, being stored outside, as well as a rocking chair. Um, codes 18106K and and 7434A1H are complied. The city is requesting an additional 10 days to gain compliance or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Thank you. A couple of questions. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes. And does the affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Correct. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violation that's still outstanding at the property? Yes. Um, as well as the other violations that have now been uh, yes. brought into compliance? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you talked a little bit about the outdoor storage that remains. Did they make any progress on the outdoor they storage? They did. They The, the landscape um, was cut. The visible trash can was removed. And um, a lot of the outdoor storage, um, such as <coughs> the recycle bins, plastic containers, um, the wheelchair, there was a wheelchair out there, they removed that, however, it still has the boxes and the rocking chair um, in the front of the property. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to, the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents are made part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? The respondent is not present. <laughs> However, with certified mail and posting, the city has proper notice. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation of city code 9471C regarding outdoor storage, but has complied with the other code sections that were cited in the notice. I will allow 10 additional days to cure the outstanding violation after that. Daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Agenda item number 31, case number is CE2210072. Case address is 3016 South Olive Avenue. Sony Bend, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. This property was cited on November 30th, 2022. Notice of violation was posted at the property in City of Hall on November 30th, 2022. Certified mail was sent on December 1st, 2022. The property was cited for codes 18106K, 744C4, and 7894C. I have not um, made contact with the property owner. As of yesterday, the property um, is still um, out of compliance for codes 18106K and 7444C4. However, code 7894C is complied. The city uh, is requesting an additional 10 days to gain compliance or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Now, the property landscape was cut. The only thing that's pending is the hedges um, on the southeast side of the property that's still out of compliance. Thank you very much. Just a couple of questions. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes. And the photographs that we've reviewed, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you've observed at the property? Yes. And I just want to make sure it's my understanding that um, it's overgrown hedges at this time on the southeast side of the property that need to be cut or trimmed. Correct. And those form the basis of the alleged violations for both 18106K and 744C4? Correct. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents are made part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? Respondent is not present. However, the city has proper notice with the... Um, 
Notice documents contained in the file. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation of City Codes 18106K and 744C4, but has complied with City Code 7894C. I'll allow 10 days to cure the outstanding violations. After that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Agenda item number 32, case number is CE2210282. Case address is 630 49th Street. City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Robert Watkins. This property was cited October 20th. Certified mail was sent October 20th. C uh, certified mail was returned on December 11th. City Hall was posted December 6th. This property was cited for garbage can placement, fence permits, and excessive growth. Compliant violations are the garbage can placement and excessive growth. The remaining violation is a fence permit. The city is requesting 40 days at or $100 per day after. How much? 40 days at $100, 100. per day after. I've had correspondence with the new uh, homeowner. Uh, obviously when they remodeled the home house, the whole house, they never took out any permits uh, for the windows or the fences. And he's been dealing with the building, but I haven't heard anything in a month uh, where it was going. I checked this morning and there's been no update in permits at all this morning. Thank you, um, Officer Watkins. Just a couple of questions. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes. Does that affidavit reflect that the uh, notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes. Was the property posted with the notice of violation? Yes, it was. The photographs that we've reviewed, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you've observed at the property? Yes, it does. And could you just take a moment uh, for the record to let us know what it is you observed about the fence that you believe is an alleged violation? Uh, it's, a, it's a brand new wood fence that was up there. Um, it was done back when they were remodeling. Um, it's, I don't, it doesn't even seem to be one that would have been inspected because of the large gap in between both sides of the neighbors. Uh, after checking, there was never a permit pulled for it. I checked back in Google Images. It was never a, a wood fence uh, that was that far back on either side of the home. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, correspondence, and any and all other uh, documents relied upon. Those documents are made part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? The respondent is not present, but the city has proper notice with the posting following the return certified mail. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation of City Code 94302A3 regarding the fence. Did you say the other two have complied? Yes, yes. Yeah. They cut the landscaping and the uh, garbage cans have okay. been removed. Uh, I will allow f 40 additional days to comply. After that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Agenda item number 33, case number is CE2210297. Case address is 612 54th Street. City of Western Chico Compliance Officer Robert Watkins. This property was cited on October 20th. Certified mail was on October 21st. Certified mail was received on October 21st. City Hall was posted December 6th. This property was cited for paint, outdoor storage, fence maintenance, excessive growth, and clean and sanitary. Compliant violations were uh, fence maintenance and excessive growth. Remaining violations are the paint, outdoor storage, and clean and sanitary. This what was the last one? Say again? You said paint, outdoor storage, and what's clean and the sanitary? And clean and sanitary. Fashion debris is outside. Okay. The, the city is requesting uh, 30 days at $50 per day after. Thank you, Officer Watkins. Does your file contain an executed affidavit of posting? Yes. Does the affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes. 
And was the property posted with the notice of violation? Yes, it was. And the photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you've observed at the property? Yes, it does. And could you just take a brief moment for the record to let us know what it is you observed at the property um, that you believe is an alleged violation that still exists? Uh, you have uh, the fence that was in disrepair uh, right there on the sides that it wasn't connected. It was bulging in as well as the front and lower rear. They took the fence down, so that cured that violation. But they still, in the midst of that, left the uh, rest of the fence laying in front of the, uh, the front door. And the uh, paint is right above the fascia there. It's all the rotted wood, <coughs> as in the main entry where the home is as well. Uh, it needs to be painted. It's all weathered and peeling right there and above the fascia. Okay. And so I just want to make sure the record's clear. It's the chain link fence that they took down. Is there any issue with the white fence? No, that they just put that up. Um, I went by there when I took the pictures and saw it. I checked there was no permit, so that'd probably be coming back for that as well. But that's brand new there. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents are part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? Respondent is not present. However, the city has proper notice with the posting and the certified mail. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find that uh, the property remains in violation of City Code 18106A regarding clean and sanitary conditions, 18106G regarding exterior paint, and 9471C regarding outdoor storage. Uh, but the property has complied with 94302A4 regarding fence maintenance and 18106B regarding excessive growth. Uh, I will allow 30 additional days to cure the outstanding violation after that daily fines of $50 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Agenda item number 34, case number CE2210-0376, case address 705 52nd Street. And suit of West Beach Code Compliance, Robert Watkins, this property was signed October 25th, certified mail was on October 26th, Cert uh, Certified mail was returned December 11th. City Hall was posted December 6th. This property was cited for outdoor storage, landscape, side of the landscaping, uh, and junk vehicle. Compliant violations are junk vehicle. Remaining violations are the outdoor storage and landscaping, side of the yard. I've had uh, correspondence with the uh, property manager as much as this morning. Uh, they're putting down sod today and removing all the outdoor storage. So the city is requesting with this additional 20 days at $50 per day after. Thank you, Officer Watkins. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes, ma'am. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes, it was. Was the property posted with the notice of violation? Yes. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you observed at the property? Yes, it was. And for the record, could you just Tell us what it is you observed at the property that you believe is an alleged violation. Uh, there's uh, bare areas in the front yard where it's just pure dirt. Um, there's the forerunner that's in the driveway. At the time, it didn't have a plate on the rear of it. And uh, there's also in the pictures, there's uh, several propane tanks, uh, buckets, and things of that nature in one of the images where the outdoor storage. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you, those documents are part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? The respondent is not present. The city has proper notice with the posting following the return certified mail. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation of city code 9471C regarding outdoor storage and 94442C1 regarding landscape areas uh, needing sod I find the property has complied with 34102a regarding junked and abandoned vehicles i will allow 20 additional days for compliance with the outstanding violations after that daily fines of 50 dollars per day are assessed until compliance is achieved agenda item number 36 case number ce 22100388 case address 63354 street i see the west beach code officer robert watkins this property was cited for when this property was cited on October 26th, certified mail was sent October 31st. Certified mail was received November 4th. City Hall was posted December 6th. 
This property was cited for siding of the swell, siding of the yard and bare areas, junk vehicles, garbage can placement, complied violations were sorted of the yard and junk vehicle. Remaining violations are garbage can placement and sorting of the swell. Uh, the city is requesting additional 30 days at $50 per day after. Thank you. Officer Watkins, does your file contain an executed affidavit of posting? Yes, it does. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes, it does. Was the notice of violation posted at the property? Yes, it was. Did the photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you observed at the property? Yes, it does. And can you please tell us what it is you observed that you believe um, leads to an alleged violation? Well, at the time you see in this images, there was no uh, sod in the swell whatsoever on both sides. Uh, also at the time, the, um, the yard itself had large patches that it was missing uh, sod. Uh, there was the truck that was part of the Silverado. It had expired plates that were a few years expired uh, that has since been removed. And the, uh, the garbage can receptacles are still out front there. There are several of them out front. Uh, with the remaining violations would be the sodding of the swell, which we did in the last image, that there was no sod on either side, as well as the uh, recycle and trash uh, receptacles that were out front. So, in conclusion, the ones, uh, the alleged violations that still exist, um, would that be the alleged violation of 7434A1J, mm -hmm. 7894C, as well as 94442C1? No, that would be the, the garbage can uh, placement for the J, and then 7894C. And this, well, the 74-34A-1J. So just those two, the 74-34A-1J and the 78-94C. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photographs, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents are made part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? The respondent is not present, but uh, with the received certified mail, the city has proper notice. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation of city code 7434A1J regarding garbage can placement and 7894C regarding landscaping the swale and parkway. I'll find compliance with the other cited code sections. I will we'll allow 30 additional days to comply with the outstanding violations after that daily fines of $50 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Turn to item number 37, case number CE2211079, case address 608 59th Street. To the Hustle Beach Code Compliance, Robert Watkins. This property was cited November 3rd. Certified mail was sent November 4th. Certified mail was received November 7th. City Hall was posted December 6th. This property was cited for repair of roof, repair interior walls, plumbing fixtures, paint, outdoor storage, repair kitchen sink, external doors and windows, exterminate pests and rodents, excessive growth, and clean and sanitary. Uh, none of the violations have been complied as of yet. All violations remain outstanding. I've had correspondence with the homeowner as well as the uh, attorneys that are working with them. Uh, I've had no other response in the last 20 days, and the city is requesting 40 days at $100 per day after. How many days? 40. 40? Okay. Thank you, Officer Watkins. Is there an ex executed affidavit of posting in your file? Yes. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes, it does. And was the property posted with the notice of violation? Yes, it does. The photographs that we've been reviewing, do they truthfully and accurately depict and represent the alleged violations that you've observed at the property? Yes. And can you please, um, Tell us for the record what it is you observed that supports each of these alleged violations. Uh, well, she goes back a few uh, images there. While we're on that one, the plumbing and kitchen sink with creative blue painter's tape that is supposedly stopping leaks. Uh, there's a few more images to the right if she keeps going. You'll see that the kitchen sink uh, faucet is completely up. The sink lifts up. Uh, the windows, there are several windows that are broken and just have tape on them. 
Uh, there's leaks, which is right there, which is the roof repair that causes, it looks like, the mildew or mold that is on the wood there. Uh, that's also paint, because on the exterior it needs to be repainted after the repairs are made. Uh, the clean and sanitary, or the outside where there's several trash, debris, uh, storage, and everything that is stored on the both sides of the of the home itself. Exterminate pests. Um, in a few images, you'll see there's rodent droppings and things of that nature that are all just rampant up under the sink in the kitchen. Thank you. I was just um, looking to see the outside, um, just the excessive growth. Well, they've they've cut the um, it's sorry, they've cut the excessive growth in the back, but it's in the front, but it's still in the back. Uh, it'll be a few pictures where it shows all the trash and everything. You'll start to see it on okay. the back side. Thank you very much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing, certified mailing documents, photographs, um, as well as any and all other documents relied upon. In addition, Officer Watkins, you talked about there was correspondence between yourself yes, and the owner. Okay, mm -hmm. that correspondence as well submitted as evidence. And right then we just saw a video. Was that a video taken by yourself? Yes, ma'am. I was in the unit uh, showing the way the cabinets it made you feel as if you were leaning over, but it's just the cabinets and the wall that were given. Thank you. The city also submits as evidence um, the video. Thank you. Um, Mr. Watkins, can you give me some testimony or point me to the photographs that depict the uh, excessive growth and, and um, tell me what's going on with the um, extermination violation? Right, the excessive growth would be in the rear of the home in that area. I see. Um, they cut the front, but they didn't cut the back because they would have had to move all that stuff that they're storing in the back there. Um, but the rodent droppings, and it's up under the... If she goes to the images where the kitchen sink, you can see them all on the bottom. Okay. The little droppings that are left over from them. All right, thank you. Uh, and then your documents are made part of the record. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? No. The respondent is not present, but with the received certified mail, the city has proper notice. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find that the property remains in violation as cited. I will... Uh, Allow 40 days to comply. After that, daily fines of $100 per day are assessed until compliance is achieved. Paying agenda item number 38, case number CE2210220, case address 1401 Village Boulevard, unit 825. <coughs> Don Williams, Code Enforcement, City of West Palm Beach. I'm here on the behalf of Kevin Levine today. He cited 1401 Village Boulevard for Unit 1401 Village Boulevard, Unit 825 for a rental license, which is 22441. Uh, certificate of use, which is 2232A. And this also is a repeat violation he cited on the 2635B. This is a repeat violation of case CE1910250. Um, he actually cited this case on October 27, October 18th of 22. He posted it on October 19th of 22. Certified mail was sent out 10 19th of 22. Uh, my recommendation today is to cite, or actually to uh, have a fine for the uh, repeat violation at $200 per day back to the date that he actually cited the case, which is October 18th of 22. And for the um, rental license itself, one time fine of $250. Thank you, Officer Williams. Just a few questions. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in the file? Yes. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first class mail? Yes. And does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was posted at City Hall? Yes. 
And does the file and the affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was posted at the property? Yes. Is there an indication in the case file that the um, there was confirmation that the unit was still being rented? That's correct, yes. Okay. And the photograph that's in the file, is that an accurate photograph of the posting of this particular property? Yes. And with respect to the um, underlying violation back in 2019, is it your testimony that the old city code number for the rental license and COU required are the same as those current city code sections? It is, yes. Um, 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 equivalent in every way. There's been it no is. change. It is. Just the number correct? change. Okay. The violation and right. the same. And was there a time when the underlying 2019 case came into compliance? That's correct. Okay. Do you want that date? Um, yes, sir. Uh, that date it came into compliance uh, September 21st of 21. Okay. And you're asking for the $200 fine to begin on the first date of observation currently of October 18th, 2022. Correct. To today and continuing until brought into compliance. Is that, that is accurate? Correct. Yes. Thank you so much. And also one time fine of 250 for the um, current right. violation. Exactly. Thank you so much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the case file, including but not limited to the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photograph, the underlying case notice of violation, and affidavit of compliance, um, and any and all other documents relied upon. Okay, so the one time fine will be attached to the rental license, yes. and then the repeat recurring will be attached to the certificate of use. Is that? Is that yes, how certificate of use and the, well, I'm just do a one-time fine for the certificate of use and the current, because we're going to have the violation uh, fine running on the repeat, so we're going to need to have two running at the same time. You can run it on the uh, certificate of use as well, but I'm just going to do it on the repeat. Okay. Run the fine. Is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? Respondent is not present, but the city has proper notice with the certified mail and the posting in this case. Based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation as cited. Um, for the record, city code 22441 that's cited in this case is the identical code that uh, used to be city code 18162A, which is what was cited in the 2019 case. Um, so that is a repeat violation. The certificate of use um, under 2232A was also cited in the 2019 case, so that is a repeat violation as well. Um, I will impose a one-time $250 fine for not having the rental license, and then uh, on the repeat violations, daily fines of $200 per day are assessed beginning October 18th, which was the day the repeat violations were first observed and continuing until they are brought into compliance. Agenda item number 39, case number CE2210023, case address 1401 Village Boulevard, unit 2211. Don Williams again, code enforcement on behalf of Kevin Levine. He cited this property, 1401 Village Boulevard, unit 2211, for a rental license, certificate of use. In this case, it's a repeat violation of case CE 1910251. And he actually cited this case for October 18th of 22. Uh, certified mail sent out October 19th of 22. City Hall and the property itself was posted October 19th of 22. Uh, the recommendation again would be a $200 fine be beginning October 18th of 22 when the violation was observed and also on the, the current rental license and certificate of use, one-time fine of $250. Thank you, Officer Williams. Just a couple of questions. Is there an executed affidavit of posting in the file? Yes. Does that affidavit reflect that the notice of violation was also sent by regular first-class mail? Yes. Is there an indication in the file that the property is still being rented? Yes. And the photograph of posting, is that a truthful and accurate uh, depicting of posting at this particular property? Yes. And for CE 19100251, um, did that come into compliance? It did, September 21, 21. Thank you. And again, um, just as in the last case, for the 2019 case here, and was that for the same exact code sections, 
because of uh, rental license and COU, just different actual numbers. Correct. And yeah. But where the code section is identical in every other way. It is, yes. Thank you so much. Special Magistrate, the city would like to submit as evidence a copy of the notice of violation, or excuse me, a copy of the case file, including the notice of violation, affidavit of posting, certified mailing documents, photograph, and any and all other documents relied upon. Thank you. Those documents are made part of the record. Uh, is there anybody here on behalf of the respondent? The respondent is not present. However, the city has proper notice with the certified mail and posting contained in the file. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I find the property remains in violation of City Code 2635B, I'm sorry, uh, 2232A regarding certificate of use and 22441 regarding rental license, which used to be City Code 18162A. I find that those violations are repeat violations based on the 2019 case. Uh, I will impose a one-time $250 fine uh, for the not having the rental license, and then on the repeat violations, daily fines of $200 per day beginning October 18th when the repeat violations were first observed and continuing until the violations are cured. Thank you. Agenda item number 40, case number is CE2210224, case address is 4187 North Haverhill Road, Unit 515, and it is rescheduled. Agenda item number 41, case number is CE2210304, case address is 4187 North Haverhill Road, Unit 517. It's also rescheduled. Agenda item number 42, case number is CE2210320, case address is 4179 North Haverhill Road, Unit 607. It's also rescheduled. Agenda item number 43, case number CE2210321, case address 4179 North Haverhill Road, Unit 608, and it's rescheduled. Agenda item number 44, case number CE2210322, case address 4149 North Haverhill Road, Unit 1602, and it's rescheduled. Agenda item number 45, case number CE2210323, case address 4149 North Haverhill Road, Unit 1606, is rescheduled. Agenda item number 46, case number CE2210324, case address 4175 North Haverhill Road, Unit 915, and it's rescheduled. Agenda item number 47, case number CE2210326, case address 4175 North Haverhill Road, Unit 916, and it's also rescheduled. And that concludes the regular agenda. All right, that concludes the 9 o'clock agenda. Um, does anybody need to take a short break before we roll into the lien reductions, or do you want to just move on? I'm ready to keep going. All right, let's... Um, Let's go right into the uh, 11.30 reduction hearing agenda. Looks like we have six cases on this agenda this morning. Um, for the record, my name is Keith Davis. I'm the special magistrate that's been appointed to preside over this agenda. Um, when your case is called, please come up to the podium to my right. Uh, the city is going to give me some background information uh, on the case, um, what happened with the original violation hearing and the amount of the lien and any recommendations that they have. I will then come over to you and you can tell me about the request for the reduction, uh, what you're seeking, um, circumstances and so forth. Um, I do need to swear everybody in who's going to be speaking to me about any of the remaining items on the agenda. So if you weren't here this earlier this morning, um, when I swore uh, folks in, please stand, raise your right hands, and I'll swear you in now. If each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right, thank you very much. Um, I don't think we need any further explanation, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Starting with agenda item number one, case number is CE1101068. Case address is 1709 Belvedere Road. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, KCE 11010068 was cited on January 7, 2011 uh, for numer numerous violations such as debris, overgrowth, um, signs, business tax, etc. The property was taken to hearing on April 20, 2011. Magistrate gave an additional 90 days or $100 a day to achieve compliance. 
The property was out of compliance for 3,996 days, resulting in a lien amount of $399,500. The applicant was the cause of the violation. The city is seeking 25%. Um, the magistrate also keep in mind that this property is slated to be sold after we finalize today's lien reduction. I'm sorry, I, I heard you say it's slated to be sold, and then I didn't hear oh, that. Oh, after we finalize uh, today's okay. lien reduction. Is this a single family residence? No, it's a commercial. Business. Commercial property? Okay. Oh, I see. Zone in general, commercial. Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead and tell me your name and address, and then you can proceed. Yeah, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, my name is uh, Joe D'Onofrio. Um, my wife and I own the property now. Um, uh, we actually live in Fort Lauderdale, 2112 Northeast 45th Street in Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Okay. So um, the original violations were sent to uh, Bernice Jenkins, which is my wife's uh, mother. She actually owned the, the business at the time. Um, so she had a tenant there that was under a triple lease. Um, and uh, we, we can only assume that she asked the individual to re redo the property the way it was supposed to. We don't know if they ever did. So anyway, so um, we weren't aware of it. And then what happened was in uh, 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 9 of 2016, uh, Leslie's mother passed away and we inherited the property. And then uh, we didn't even realize that there was an issue until uh, we put the property up for sale. And there was a, um, uh, the, it came back with the lien um, that was active. And uh, it was discovered on May 24th, we contacted the city and um, uh, Mr. Williams met me the very next day and then we addressed all the additional issues that were still pending or that were there and uh, we completed everything in 31 days. And I, I don't know if it helps at all, but um, a lot of these um, uh, issues that were actually uh, cited were uh, things that we could we didn't even find when the, um, myself and Mr. Williams went out there. So um, we were assuming that a lot of this was all done. Some of it had to be redone, like the, the, the walls had to be painted, repainted, and stuff like yeah, that. That was going to be a, a question. I mean, this is a this is a twelve year old case. So I, I if, uh, on a commercial property, it would seem difficult to believe that these these types of property maintenance violations have existed for the last 12 years without. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, even even in the course of, of uh, daily uh, operation, all these things that were actually there had to be um, uh, repaired just by normal operations. Um, if you want, I can go through these real quickly uh, if you want me to explain what happened. I would, yeah. Okay, so the exterior walls, so there, one of them was exterior walls, um, and roof gutters are in disrepair. The building doesn't even have gutters, so we don't even know what was going on there. Uh, and we found no issues with the walls when we were there. The next thing was the exterior doors and windows were in disrepair. Um, the only thing we found there was one, there was a doorknob broken, and uh, we repaired that and some flashing on a door. Uh, the other one was exterior venting. Uh, all the exterior venting was, was working. The only thing that was there was an old um, refrigerator fan. We threw that out in, in the trash. Uh, exterior paint was faded. We went ahead and we painted it again as the city requested. So that was done. Trash and debris, there was, there was some trash there. Uh, there's a Burger King and people throw trash there. So we went ahead and cleaned that up, uh, mowed the lawn. Um, and let me, let me uh, just stop a, before you what? before you go on on, on the on the exterior paint. I'm, I'm I mean I'm looking at a building that's pretty much all glass. So I'm assuming it's on the sides. Correct. And the yes. Rear. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's only yes. Correct. It's only okay. sides. The rear and the, as well. Up sides in the rear. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And then um, there's a violation for an obsolete sign in the in the rear. There was no sign there when we uh, looked. Uh, certificate for business that was taken care of. Um, there is the business that there that is there now has um, 
a certificate. Um, there was some permits, they were closed, uh, and they did request us to read, uh, reseal code and, and stripe. So we did that again as well. When was the parking lot resurfaced most recently? Uh, you know? Yeah, so they asked us to, in order to, to come here to redo it, and it was done. Um, uh, so that, that looks like it's pretty recent. Day span, yeah. So somewhere in between May 24th and June 28th. Of last year? Uh, correct. Okay. Yeah, the code officer notated here, uh, so at the time that they did apply for the lane reduction, which was in July of last year. Okay. Um, no, I lied. Well, it was put in July of last year, but the code officer put have a compliance date for all the violations for June 28th okay. of last year. Yeah, so that's around the time everything was done. How many um, tenant bays are in this building? Two. Okay. Are, have they have they been in operation pretty much this whole time between 2011 and now, or have they been vacant or off and on? Or? Yeah, they have. We it's been it's been uh, <coughs> excuse me. The one side is a small pizza place. They've been there for years, and then the other one was a six rental car. They were they were releasing it till um, I think it was February or March of 2022, and then they vacated, and then that's when we decided to sell it. Okay. Um, so I guess my, I mean, I'm trying to thinking about the certificate of use and business tax. I mean, I, have these been operating for the last decade without a business tax, paying business tax and, and having a certificate of use or? It appears so from um, what we're seeing here and even when we started the process for lien reduction, we they actually did have to make a payment for the pizza place that was there because they were in delinquent. So, um, well, as soon as they did step in, they have worked with us and try to get everything done. But I mean, the business aspect of it, they were not paying it. So that did lead for the property to be in violation. Yeah, the business tax was for actually for a business that was there yeah. uh, when my mother-in-law owned it, and they they vacated years ago probably in 90, like two years after um, um, 2011, 2012 or 2013, they had vacated, they were gone. So the only place that was there, like I said, was the pizza place and then the uh, sixth rental car. All right, but so those businesses are good in terms of their business tax? Yes, as of now, okay. they are good. Yeah. Okay, that, that makes sense then, I understand, okay. All right, anything else, uh, sir, that you wanna? That's on the record that that's as best I could I could recollect sir okay uh, anything else from the city no okay and you, your recommendation was uh, 25 percent yes the 25 percent okay okay This is a tough one because it, it doesn't, it looks horrible on paper um, with all the violations, but it doesn't sound like, and, and nor does the current picture make it appear that this has been a, a blight to the, to the city. It sounds like it's been a going concern. Yeah, Your Honor, I mean, if you well, total it up, it's only a couple thousand dollars worth of work even, so I, I can't imagine that it would. Yeah, but uh, you know, on the other hand, this has been at least on paper, it's been sitting there for a long time, acc accumulating these fines. Um, right. you know, yeah, clear, clearly there were some violations uh, that were. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, but we also wanna point out too, even during their application, they did state that the person, the uh, mother -in -law, your mother-in-law who was taking care of the property was older age, of older age, and at that time, she wasn't really taking care of the property so it didn't make any sense for any of the other officers to go back and cite more when we have a whole list of items okay. that were previously cited so it's not a whether or not it wasn't a blight it's just it was already cited yeah she was 90 years old at the time uh, so I don't not we're not really sure what uh, her state of mind was and she passed five years later so yeah. 
you know, I, I, my philosophy would tend to be a little stricter on commercial properties because you know you're running a business. Um, but it's, you know this just doesn't seem like it's a. I mean, the lien is four hundred thousand dollars, and twenty-five percent of that is a hundred thousand dollars. I, I, to me, what I've heard does not justify even a hundred thousand uh, dollar fine. So that's why I'm, I'm struggling with this one. Um, I mean, based on on what I've heard and what's what's in the record, um, you know, I'm going to reduce this to to. Uh, Twenty-five thousand dollars from down from the four hundred or three hundred ninety-nine five hundred. How long will it take you to pay that? Um, we can pay within thirty days. Thirty days. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, agenda item number two, case number is CE 17030839. Case address is 1024 Selkirk Street. Cassandra's like, can you hear me? I can't hear myself. You can hear me? Okay. <clears throat> Cassandra say hello, code enforcement officer with the city of West Palm Beach. Uh, KCE 17030839 was cited on March 29, 2017 for safe egress, repairing of the roof walls, foundation, paint, rental license, certificate of use, junk vehicle, garbage can placement, um, decorations, displays, and unpaid parking. The property was taken to hearing on May 17, 2017. The property was given an additional 30 days or $100 a day to achieve compliance. The property was out of compliance for 1,126 days, resulting in a lien amount of $112,600. Um, magistrate, after speaking with the current owner and learning some of the extenuating circumstances of their phrasing at the current time, the city is seeking 15%. Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Tell me your name and address, and then you can proceed. Yes. Uh, my name is Chad Chitwood. Um, address is um, 225 um, Ocean Dunes uh, Circle is current address. Um, we came to discover that this uh, lien was placed on this property um, during the sale of our, our family home, um, and we had no idea that this had gone on. Um, when the initial violation took place, I was in constant contact with the code enforcement officer. We had done everything that he had asked. I mean, we resodded the property, we painted the property, um, we fixed rotted wood that was on the fascia, we repaired asphalt. Um, the only thing that was um, outstanding was the um, certificate of use and the rental license. And we applied for that, and I spoke with him and told him, as like you know, and he said that he could see that internally, so it wasn't like a reinspection. And as far as my understanding, everything was in compliance, and then that's why we were really caught off guard when we found out that this lien um, was placed on the property. Um, I know they said they posted, but I don't know. At the time, we did evict a tenant that was there, and I don't know if it was posted on the house, and spitefully, he may have thrown it out or done something. Uh, I'm not sure where the mailing went because we did not receive a mail. I've always taken care of anything that the uh, city has had an issue with. Um, same property about a year ago, they had um, said that the fence was in disrepair. It was a side chain link fence that butted up next to the Dura Park Zoo against the end of the street. Um, I went, took the fence down, um, called for reinspection, and they you know, told me later that it was actually the city's fence um, but that's just the way I am. I took care, I've always taken care of the property. 
I'm a hardworking person. I go out there and do anything that needs to be done. Um, when I filed for this lien reduction, again, we've gone out. We, I think these are more current pictures. We resodded the place. We painted patio. We fixed. I've always been that way. We fix everything. That anything there's an issue, and you know, I know it shouldn't get to that point. But sometimes, you know, with tenant situations, we just don't always see what's going on there 24/7. You know, I'm not a I'm not a, uh, one of those vacant landlords where I'm never around there. Um, I, I do try to go by and I tell them, pick this up, pick that up. So we've always tried our hardest. I've been a resident of the city for 15 years previously. I've worked with the city. So I, I'm wholeheartedly about what you guys do. And this just really caught us off guard. And I mean, this really, this ended up costing me the sale of our house um, because I couldn't sell it with this lien on it. And so it's cost me thousands of dollars right now. Okay. Why is the city recommending 50% on this one? Um, I remember what Mr. Chitwood, I mean, we had a conversation outside uh, of here of uh, what he was going through, trying to sell properties and personal. Yeah. Oh. oh, I thought you said why. I thought, I I'm sorry. sorry. I can't I heard really five hear. five zero. You said That's one five. Him. Okay. That, that, that. Oh, thank you, Mark. Yeah. Okay, well, that answers that question. Yes, what, what does the city's file show in terms of how what, what happened back um, when the order finding violation was issued in terms of progress and stuff like that? Uh, um, the code officer at the time did note that the reinspection for compliance failed because at the time the garbage can placement was still out there and it was unsafe egress. egress. The walkway pavers, the east and west side uh, remained um, they were uneven and parts of it were loose on the west side of the property and he put pictures in the file to show that. So that's why he ended up failing it and submitted the affidavit of non-compliance. Okay. They were, they were like 12 by 12 stepping stones that the tenant had placed on the grass leading down to the parking places and I'd removed them. You know, I'm not sure, you know, if the reinspection happened before I'd removed them, but I'd removed them. And like I said, when we went back, I don't know if they have previous pictures, but there still was some things there, but I cleaned everything out. We took all pavers that didn't belong out completely. Um, I've since put some um, um, like railroad ties in front of the parking because the tenants were pulling up onto the grass and they were killing the grass. Mm -hmm. um, so I put some you know, barriers there so that they can't pull up onto the grass. So the city's file does show that there was some um, things were done to, to try and get the com at least the minimum property standard stuff done back then. Yeah, that was also notated by the former code officer that they did meet on the property and they went over um, the violations and what needed to be done at the time. And he did put in here um, uh, there were partial compliance, unpaid parking, the junk vehicles. Um, and at the time, the, um, some of the garbage cans were removed, holiday lights were removed. So there was progress being made. And like I said, they were on speaking terms. So okay. he did try. And this just seems to be an ongoing problem I'm having with the garbage can situation I'm trying to resolve. Because, you know, you can tell them, the tenants, you know, please put them back behind the house, put them someplace. And they just seem to not want to always do it. So I'm looking into trying to get some kind of a cubicle thing or something to hide it behind. So then the rental license was never issued because the, there were some outstanding violations still in terms of the property. Is that? Uh, there, it's not notated here that it wasn't, um, that there was an issue after that. Yeah, it was issued. Yeah, it, the issues were just uh, the unsafe egress and the garbage cans being okay. put out of business. Okay. All right, thank you. Anything else, uh, sir, that you'd like to tell me? No. Anything else from the city? All right. Um, um, based on what I'm hearing, there, there definitely was an effort. It was, I don't see a uh, absentee landlord or someone that was turning a blind eye and not not. Um, not trying. Just didn't quite get to the finish line. So we have um, a hundred and twelve thousand six hundred dollar lien. Um, I'm going to reduce that down to uh, $3,000. How long will it take you to pay that? I'd like to pay it today and get the lien removed. 
put 30 days on the order, but um, yeah, I think that based on what I heard at, at this hearing that, that um, a significant reduction is warranted. So thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Moving to agenda item number three, case number is CE2010165. Case address is 432 46th Street. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. Case CE2010165 was cited on October 14, 2020 for business tax receipt and failed to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. The property was taken to hearing on November 18, 2020 property was given an additional 30 days or $150 a day to achieve compliance. The property was out of compliance for 218 days, resulting in a lien amount of $32,700. The city is seeking 25%. No, oh, yeah, those other violations, that was a misprint. Yeah. Say that again? Uh, on the page, on the next page, you'll see a list of violations, but it was a misprint. How much of it was a misprint? That whole page. The whole page? <laughs> the whole page, yeah. Okay. Just, just the first page is uh, what's correct, uh, listing the violations as the business tax receipt, failure to obtain the rental license and certificate of use. So it's just, uh, okay, just a, this is just a business tax and certificate of use case. So yeah. All of that other stuff is. Yeah, just a misprint. Got it. Okay. And then what's your recommendation? Is this a? 25%, 25? yes. Okay. Sir. You have the papa. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's oh all right. my goodness. Thank you. <coughs> Is this a new owner or same owner? This is, I think they changed names, if I remember correctly. Because we had a whole, they used to be under Cerebus, and then in the process, the name was changed. I can provide feedback right. if the special he magistrate might. would like. Yeah, go ahead and uh, put your name on the record, and then you can. Kevin Diaz, on behalf of the property owner, my office address is 14345 Commerce Way, Miami Lakes, Florida. Yes, sir. As far as feedback as ownership structure, this is a single family REIT. Uh, we spoke with city attorney's office. These properties are bundled into different portfolios. The perf overall portfolio was changed, triggering a new ownership. Okay. okay. First key, however, does manage, uh, provide asset management. Okay. Thanks for that clarification. You can um, tell me about the request for the reduction now. My understanding of the situation is what the city has conveyed, that this was all stemming from a business tax receipt issue. We did apply for the business tax where issues did come up. This was peak pandemic. Putting aside the pandemic, we do traditionally move a little slower than most owners just because we're a single family REIT. However, we did move quickly operationally as far as we could move to cure the issues. We've worked with the city um, for over a year now concerning mitigations. Every time issues come up, we work positively. We respond very quickly. Um, respectfully, we would ask for a reduction of $2,500 just because of the good faith that we've all worked together. This particular REIT does own quite a bit in the city of West Palm Beach, and we do hope to continue to maintain a positive relationship with everyone and, um, and continue to move forward. Okay, thank you. Anything else from the city? No, sir. All right. This is a 2020 case with a um, $32,700 lien uh, related to certificate of use and business tax issues. 
um, based on the testimony when I've heard at the hearing. I'm going to agree to reduce that to two thousand dollars. You can pay that within thirty days. Thank you. That's fine. Within thirty days. Yes. Okay. We can pay Thank you. Thirty days. days. Just for clarification, will we receive the final order via email? Will we receive? Excuse me. Will we receive the final order via email? Oh, please. Thank you, everyone. Agenda item number four, case number CE21030617, case address 307 South Sequoia Drive. Say hello, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. Case CE21030617 was cited on March 31st, 2021, for failure to secure a building permit, junk vehicle, business tax receipt, fence permit, fence wall maintenance. Um, on May 19, 2021, the magistrate ordered 60 days or $100 a day till compliance is achieved. The property was out of compliance for 50 days, resulting in a lien amount of $5,000. The applicant was the owner of the property when these violations occurred. The city is seeking 25%. Good afternoon. Go ahead and... Uh Tell me your name and address, and then you can tell me about the request. Hi, my name's Pam Edwards. Eugene Edwards. And Would you reside at the, um, at the address that we're talking about today? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Excuse me, can I just ask, were you guys sworn in? Yes, we were. We were. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We are asking for a reduction um, at this point. Um, I didn't quite hear the time frames that she gave, but from the time we got the information that we needed, we worked toward getting everything done. Um, in 2020, the only thing I can say is that my husband was ill for a while. We do have medical proof where he was hospitalized, where he didn't work for a while. But as soon as we got this, we worked back and forth. We've come down to the city. We've gotten paperwork drawn up. We've gone back several times where we had to walk in and have it redone, but from the, from the time we've done this, we really worked hard to try to get everything done. At this point, it is under compliance. It would really be a hardship, even with the 25% that they're asking. Okay. No, it sounds like it only took you 50, to, you know, yes. pretty short period of time yes. to turn it we around. we worked hard yeah. on this. Okay. All right, anything else from the city? Uh, I just, uh, just want to note that the officer was in constant contact with the property owners, letting them know the violations that existed. Even when he posted the door, he put in here that Ms. Edwards, Mrs. Edwards, they give him a phone call and he went over the violations. And I understand that sometimes situations lead to violations lasting a lot longer, but I think 25% is a fair ask from a $5,000 lien. So is this a rental property? No it's, not. no, it's not, sir. And um, why is there a what was the business tax violation if it's not? Um, uh, I'm not sure what the exactly what the business tax was, but it, it was a delinquent business tax. And the officer notated here that once when they got in contact with each other, Miss Pamela told him that the business is no longer valid and it should be closed out, which he did. So that violation was uh, omitted. Okay. At the time of I've, hearing. Yana, I've met everything that the city have asked me to do, even with the business. I even paid having my business closed for a year on late taxes when the business had been closed for over a year. I still paid taxes. 
Okay, and so I don't even know why that, this is coming up, but that was even taken care of. Okay, yeah, I have that's done what it everything like. that has been asked of us to do, and there has been some back and forth, but for the most part, we've done everything they asked us to do. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. Anything else, from no. folks? Okay. So this is a 2021 case. Was in out of compliance for a relatively short period of time compared to many of the other cases we see uh, on these agendas. The lien is 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 five thousand um, dollars. I'm going to reduce that to five hundred dollars. How long will it take you to pay that? Two months. Sixty days. Yes. Okay. So ordered. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Agenda item number five, case number is CE21060297. Case address is 1815 Florida Avenue. This is Anderson Hilaire, Code Enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. Case CE21060297 was cited on June 18, 2021 for required inspections, fail, failure to, um, to obtain a building permit, and work commencing before the permit. On September 1st, 2021, the magistrate ordered 30 days or $100 a day for compliance. The property was out of compliance for 49 days, resulting in a lien amount of $4,900. The applicant is, was the owner. The city is seeking 25%. Maybe I didn't hear correctly. The agenda shows a balance due of four thousand nine hundred dollars, and then the forty-five thousand. Is that just a typo on the agenda? Should the lien be forty-five nine or forty-nine hundred? Hold on. For eighteen fifteen Florida Ave. Yeah, it should be. A typo 4900 4900 is the amount of the lien yes sir okay that's a big typo mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes sir go ahead and tell me uh, your name and address and then you can proceed with the request my name is Peter Emmerich I reside at 1701 South Lagra Drive and I'm here on behalf of the owner, Eric Messenson, who is a German citizen and is in Germany. And I think you received the... Uh, yeah, the thank you. Um, the owner is a, a friend of ours. That's uh, why I'm speaking with him and I have the power of attorney. The owner of 1815 Florida Avenue is a German citizen who could not travel during the entire COVID pandemic since the US borders were closed for European citizens. So consequently, for the work on the property, he hired a general contractor and a project manager <coughs> who charged him for all permits required, including any that were in question. And they also assured him that all necessary permits had been obtained prior to the start of the work. Once the owner received a notice of violation from the city, he immediately hired William Eldred from Easy Permits to handle the situation. The owner finally could travel to West Palm Beach in September 2021, and as soon as that's when the borders opened, and he hired a plumber company, BG American Plumbing, to do the necessary work on the last open uh, permit issue. And, um, he took a video of the situation on site. The work and the video were taken on September 30th to the city, and the owner was assured by easy permits that the permit applications and the thumb drive were handed over to the building department the very next day. 
In October 2021, the owner received a lien order stating that the necessary documents had not been handled, handed in and the fine was imposed. So Mr. Messenzel traveled back to West Palm Beach to remedy the situation and the application was handed over, this time with the owner present. So he basically took the gentleman that was supposed to do it by the hand and they um, brought it over here together. As you can see from the previous points, the owner did whatever he could to be in compliance with the West Palm Beach regulations. As a German, he was very concerned to have all permits issued by the book. He was misled by the contractors regarding the obtaining of the permits in the beginning and was then again incorrectly informed by Easy Permits Inc., who was supposed to handle the issue on his behalf. So we are hopeful that any or most of the fines can be waived. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, anything else from the city? No, sir. Oh, okay. So this is uh, a 2021 case that was in violation from just uh, under 50 days. The lien is $4,900. Um, I'll reduce that based on what I've heard uh, at this hearing. I'll reduce that to $500. Can you pay that in 30 days? Yes. 30 days. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone signed in for number six? Oh, you okay? You're here for six hundred. Okay, agenda item number six, case number CE two two zero one zero four four zero, case address six hundred South Dixie Highway, Unit five hundred four. Probably needs to be sworn in. Yeah. I don't know if you want to swear him in first. Pardon me? I don't know if you want to swear him in first or... I was sworn, sworn in. Oh, you were or you were not? Yes, sir. Oh. I thought you were here. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I remember the bow tie. <laughs> um, Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. KCE 2201040 was cited on January 31st, 2022 for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. On April 20, 2002, the magistrate ordered 30 days or $200 a day until compliance is achieved. The property was out of compliance for 70 days, resulting in a lien amount of $14,000. The applicant was the owner of the property when these violations occurred. The city is seeking 25%. Um, magistrate, please note that the property was sold that same year and according to the property appraisers for the price of $327,000. Sir, go ahead and tell me your name and address, and then you can proceed with the report. My name is Raymond Lee Kennedy, Jr. I currently live at 1130 Circle Terrace West in Delray Beach. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, I, I'm so sorry I'm here. I've paid taxes since 1985 in this county. I've never had any problem, and I always pay my taxes on time, taught by my grandfather. And I never received these notices, and I can't figure out how, as soon as I did, I sent a check in. Somehow the check was never received. Um, I did have COVID and I went home to the North Carolina for Christmas and I couldn't travel back obviously because I got sick. So I, maybe that first January thing happened when I had COVID. I also had told my renter that I was gonna sell the apartment and he was very upset about that, but I did give him five months to find a place but see, all my mail has always been sent to P.O. Box 3473 in Palm Beach because I travel for a living as an entertainment producer and event producer. So since I'm on the road so much, the, the county has always sent my tax documents and anything important to a P.O. Box. So later in April, my best friend, I was traveling in Santa Fe working, went to my post office box and that's when we found out this mess had happened. So I immediately on the road started calling here and Mr. Levine was on vacation. So I talked to his secretary and told her, I don't know what's going on. Please help me. I you know, that scared to death about a lien. So uh, Mr. Williams called me back and told me Mr. Levine was gone, but, but I, I owe $214.
but I couldn't pay for it over the phone, so I went online. But the website for two days would not accept payment. At 9.01, I said my document, I gave Ms. Williams, it finally went through. So I thought it was over. But then, a week and a half later, Mr. Levine calls and says that I am paid, but he cannot get rid of the lien, that I would need to come talk to you. But the sad thing is the whole time he was on vacation, the lien kept going. So I don't know how it happened, whether it was sent to my apartment, which is not my legal address, or whether the renter had something to do with it. And it did happen when I had COVID, but I promise you, I would never not pay what was due. I've never been that person. So I'm just asking you to please get rid of it or whatever you can do. And um, I've sold the apartment now, it wasn't rented, and but I am gonna be a homeowner in West Palm Beach County after this is all over. Okay, thank you very much, Phil. Anything else from the city? Uh, I did wanna state that um, he is correct. There was a, a balance on the um, for delinquent business tax, but that was not the only reason why um, he was cited for the rental license violation. He never got his inspections, so the um, officer was never able to walk through the units and ensure that it met the minimal housing standards. But it's been, it has been inspected. It now, was, it yes, passed it had to with be flying colors. Yeah, my my condominium is very strict. Yeah, no, yeah, so that's, those were the reasons why um, it lasted as long as it did. It, it didn't really have anything to do with the fact that Mr. Living was on vacation. It was just that no inspection was ever scheduled at the time that it needed to be. Okay. All right. Okay, any final comments, sir? I just have felt like I've been a good taxpayer and citizen and I love this county and I just would not have, would like not to have to pay that kind of money because it's gonna affect what I can buy now. Understood, okay. So this is a, uh, a relatively recent case. It's from last year. Uh, the balance of the lien is $14,000. Uh, based on uh, the testimony that I've heard at, at this hearing, I'm going to reduce that to $1,000. How long will it take you to pay that? I can pay it today. Uh, put 30 days on the order. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think that was uh, the last case. Is there anything else we need to do today before we adjourn? All right, it's 12.30, we stand adjourned.